Lace up those boots and stretch those glutes. It's time for the Wrestling Compadres with your hosts, Dale Rutledge, Scott Narva, Jay Washington and Jake Lloyd. Yes, welcome to Wrestling Compadres. Thanks to our official Compadres announcer, Benedict Cumberbatch. I am here in studio, Jake Lloyd. Scott Narver. Mr. J. Washington. And Dale Rutledge. We are, we're gathered here today to remember uh, a, a person who we barely got to know. Oh. One rambling rabbit. Man, rabbit, he, was, he had a promising future, man. May he rest in pieces. Or in K-pop. He deserves it. That's what's in the inside. He deserved clap, it. Clap, oh. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, I see what you did there. He deserved it. Yeah, it's that. There's a... <laughs> <laughs> it was that, but, you know, I did a different version. I know. I just wanted it to make like sure. dry. I just wanted to keep it with the energy, though. Oh, God. We we're already If in only it. I did stand-up, then you could relay all the jokes <laughs> that I do. Uh, it's, <laughs> let's get right into Slamcast News. Slamcast News! <laughs> what, what? Whoa, you got so excited there. <laughs> yeah, because I saw you taking a breath there. I just wanted to d- cut you off. Oh, you did a good job. Because I'm a wild card. That's what I am. Well, Woo-wee. I love that segue. I lost my opportunity to start Slamcast m- News, much like WWE uh, lost writers uh, and Ryan Callahan being fired after butting heads with David Kapoor, also who is a senior vice president of creative. Formerly look, known as Rajin Singh. Look at you skipping to the next story. After yeah, I did the the setup to the one. Oh, good on you. <laughs> oh, I didn't even pick that up. I just assumed that was. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, I assumed, but sure. Um, yeah, it specifies losing writers. They're losing. They are because as long with as well as he's gone, writer R. D. Evans is gone, and the road dog is gone. Do you think they're going to find them anytime soon? That's rumored to be also a leave of absence. Uh, from okay. the creative road, team. Road dog. Yeah, he's left the creative team. I don't know for how long. Uh, but that's. Hmm. It was post mania, right? I remember after mania. So but there's see. a lot of rumors and speculations, like, oh, well, they did all the stuff at the Hall of Fame with Vince, and who knows if there's just big blowouts or what happens. So there's a lot of speculation, but I don't think he's revealed the story yet. Well, I know. Well, the thing that may be true, I, I, I I'll trust you more so than anything with that one. Sweet. But the whole thing with Ryan Callahan, he's been, but like I said, button heads with Kapoor, and again, this creative thing that and the writers, you can see it in the past couple weeks of the shows. You can see it. Everybody, it's not on the same page. Like everybody's trying to scramble and figure out what are we doing. That's why the wild card, also, which we'll talk about in a little bit later, came into play as well. All these, they're having a. It's a whole lot going on with them trying to get ready for the move to Fox just for SmackDown. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but also great but, insight. I feel like but, if I feel like if they keep if they're losing writers, if that if that's to state that. But again, like, he is a writer on Raw. I will say. Let me make sure. You know, clarify that. Hey, but we got wild cards now. Those writers could be on any show. <laughs> oh, my gracious. Some of them might even pop up on a different promotion show. It could be three of them, four I of thought, them, five I of them. I thought all the writers just up and died, honestly. It, well, as 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 much as it said, like, they're losing writers, they're never at a lack of acquiring new ones. Right. Like, who's who's going to turn that job down? I, you know what? If you, I, my thing is this. If you know what this job entails you may not be so inclined to get it unless you are like Ryan was. He was on the home team, so he didn't have to travel. He just stayed in Connecticut. But you mm-hmm. have the writers who have to travel like the, you know, like the superstars. Sure. And you're also on call for Vince 24-7. Sure. So if Vince calls you at 4 in the morning and you sleep, you got to wake up and answer Vince McMahon's call. If you're outside of the wrestling industry, it's a very unappealing job. Yes. If you love wrestling, you're going to take the job right. and then hate it. Yeah. But okay. Still be there. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I also I don't know any facts on this, but I assume it's a pretty decent paying gig, as far as writing gigs go. Yeah. It's just it could it, be. It's, it's just a headache. Steady, and right. then I I hear the the hard part is for any writers that have taken the job that uh, I've heard interviewed, where they have to live in Connecticut or they have to live in New York, like having to live somewhere that's just incredibly expensive. Right. When you're hardly ever home, that's and fair. Yeah. throwing that money away. It's like I'm on the road all the time. Why do I have to be right near based here, Connecticut, when I'm never even asked to come in the studios there? Right. So right. that's what I hear is the hard part of I'd have so much more money 
for this job. I bet you. I wonder if that has to do with like tax incentives and stuff like that. Like WB paying people that live in state versus out of state. Sure. I mean, that's all wild speculation, but I seem like that's kind of a thing that would make them want people to live there. Because you're right. Like, what does it matter where you live if on a, every week we're in a different freaking city? Well, that's only if right. you. I think that's only if you're in the road team. Like, I don't think the road team has to be based in those two, do they? From what I heard before, yeah, there's oh. someone that I've heard uh, talking about it where they had to live there as well. Jesus. Dale, your thoughts? Uh, I've only heard of the people that work at the corporate positions having to live in Connecticut. Most everybody else seems to have the freedom to be in Orlando or or maybe at the suggestion of being near Orlando. I don't I don't really know, but I mean, it seems like 80-20 for where everybody lives is somewhere near Orlando. <laughs> yeah, I guess now Orlando would be a... a New hotbed, but if you yeah, if you're working with Vince directly, who knows if he's like, I don't want you yeah. in Orlando. I want you well, up here. Well, hell, Vince is on I'm the sure, road. I'm just sure as there's much. some kind of tax break for. I'm sure there's a tax break for having the headquarters in in Stanford, but I don't know that it has to do with the number of employees. I think that's just the way that they they want people on demand, and I think they always feel like wherever wherever that centrally is, they want you as close to that as possible. I mean, I, I think that's a lot of workplaces. They don't want people who have to commute a lot. And I was saying, just saying, while you were, before you started, Dale, I'm sorry to interrupt. Vince is on the road just as much as everybody else. He's at every single, especially live TV show. He's always there. So, it and I get like when they're doing the house shows, he's not there. I don't think he's at the house shows, if I'm not mistaken. But to be able to be on the road is a whole different ball game. I don't. It just sounds confusing. It is. It's very Everything's confusing. It's very damn confusing. But <laughs> with firings, dumb. we've got hirings. Okay, who? We've got uh, Willie Mack signs a multi-year Impact Wrestling deal. Oh, my well, good for him. Yeah, he must have. They must have given him some free Impact Plus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're like, we're gonna give you going? two months. He's like, whoa, sign me up for multi years. And I good. get to, and I get to find out what pursuit is. <laughs> Did y'all sign up or or, or not? Uh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Absolutely. You paying the whole no, year? I, no, no. Okay, they third, got, three, f- three, free month first. I couldn't decide whether I was going to say free or thirty. I was really struggling. Well, there. you didn't really say either one. <laughs> uh, and also, Dale, I think you might be equally as happy about this as I am. I just saw this before we started recording, and Helico signs with AEW. Oh, that's awesome. All right, that guy's amazing. He is so God. good. He was on Lucha on the Ground and did the coolest stunts in that show yeah. and he's just naturally gifted and it was cr- criminal that he wasn't anywhere else is he gonna probably keep that same name or do you think they're gonna rebrand him in aw i think you you could rebrand him but the name right. still works right I, I don't think it's a it's a household name by any right. stretch but whatever that guy does i think he's just gonna be terrific at it well that's fun I feel like they can always just take that as it comes and see how people respond to him as that and then you know if they do a character change, they can change his name if they don't. I, th- I think they're going to have a lot of flexibility over there for, for a while. Right. Yeah, for a while. And then when they realize, <laughs> oh, WWE does what they do for a reason. Let's do that. I think they're <laughs> going to start owning all of their names. Once they realize like, oh, this is a company. We need to make money. And that's our goal here. Then they're going to end up just being just like WWE. <laughs> and NWA is pissed that he signed that deal. The NWA, uh, they said they were putting a whole lot behind him. They were expecting to go with him in a full-time capacity because they played a major part in bo- pushing his name with the 10 Pounds of Gold series. But wait, wasn't, isn't and Helico? Isn't NWA? No, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Willie Mack because we were talking about that earlier. Oh, oh. all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Willie Mack. I'm, my apologies for that. That's, that's, <laughs> was, that's on me. That's was, on me. Yeah, okay, gotcha. I see. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, Willie Mack, it's, it's hard to sign or it's hard to stay on for an idea of like, we're going to do a lot of stuff with you but we don't have a regular TV show right. for you. Right. So Willie Mack's got to go where the exposure is and where that steady money is. I, I would see for him. So this is what yeah, makes... Yeah, I could see them being upset, but I mean, I, I would presume they would kind of perceive his hands as tied when they don't have anywhere for him to live when it comes to that kind of exposure. Why Why wouldn't he sign that deal? I mean, it's as much as they may feel like they helped him, Willie Mack certainly had his own panache well before he mm-hmm. was involved over there. And Agreed. even the NWA World Heavyweight Champion had to say something about it. Uh, Nick Aldis, in a now-deleted tweet, because, of course, it never stays up until somebody screenshots it real quick, he said, quote, if you ever wanted to see the evidence of the scheming carny wrestling BS, look no further. Sorry, Willie, they took advantage of you. I, I don't know. What does that mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
This it could be talking about how the NWA treated him. You know, the whole thing with Lucha Underground. Because also NWA, they sent. I mean, not NWA. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it was NWA. They sent a cease and desist to both. No, Lucha Underground. Excuse me. Has sent a cease and desist to both Ring of Honor and NWA for using Willie Mac. Because you know Lucha Underground is still pulling people around with those contracts. Why are they doing that? I don't understand the the vibe. There seemed to be one that was an understanding of of a wrestler's lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like right. I, I know that it, it was a TV show and they were filmed it as such. And and El Ray and I get all that, but the production team specifically, uh, they they seem to really respect what the wrestlers had to do. And I I'm, I'm just surprised. This feels like something that. Like, is something happening bad at El Rey? Maybe things are collapsing or they're str- struggling to find something <laughs> based on I'm Scott's serious because right for now. them to pursue lawsuits with the wrestlers, that that's more of a corporate move. Not not anybody that w- would have had anything to do with the show itself. And for a show I that's think, seasonal, like it's over. It, the season yeah. is over. They're done working. They got to go work. They got to yeah. do something else. Same if they actually ran any original TV programs. It'd be the same thing. Like you can't expect all your actors to just sit around and do nothing. Right. We, we, uh, you know, like losses on TV. And Matthew Fox is supposed to just not do anything in the meantime. It's like, <laughs> hey, you made a great name for yourself on the show as being the leading character. Right. Please go, don't go do any movies yeah. or other uh, things in the meantime. No, it's <laughs> you're not supposed right. to do anything directly conflicting. Sure. Also, just a sidebar: Johnny is upset that you didn't pick a reference that was even further back than that one. Apologies. Apologies. <laughs> So will there's he, no hot TV shows on now. <laughs> not a one. Uh, not even one comes to mind at all. Here's another uh, interesting news story we got. Everybody remember Matt Morgan? Absolutely. Yeah. He's been voted the mayor of Longwood, Florida. Now, he was previously the commissioner since 2017, and he was voted into the mayor's office by the city commissioners. I think that's super cool. All these cities getting wrestling mayors. Two, two. two. Yeah, yeah, I can think funny. of two. Like what? A, what an odd trend. Hey, for hey a listen, transition. we didn't have any at first, so you could say the, all these cities. Dead. But they ran and they didn't get it. But yeah, this is true. And this is not by the people, which I think is interesting. I don't know how this all works there, but other than it's saying that the uh, the uh, the voted in by the city's commissioners, but clearly he did such a good job, or scares the fuck out of them. <laughs> You have a seven foot commission to us. So I think this needs to happen. Yes, sir. You're the mayor. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was like, I just came in to help get this zoning permit going on. He's like, I thought ice cream was too expensive. All right, cool. I'm the mayor. Hey. But I, I, you know, having uh, been there uh, as a fly on the wall when on your mark uh, taped with him, um, that that's a dude that's passionate. And like, he's lived in Florida for a long time and loves his town, loves his family. And, I think it's good when you got goals like that and you're trying to make a difference for the better. And you don't have to rely on, you know, the shaky business of wrestling. Let's just call it for what it is. <laughs> hey, he didn't work at Lucha Underground, the, so he's all right. The carny business, according <laughs> to the, the scheming carny business. By the way, carny wrestling, isn't that Sin Bodhi's company? Uh, Freak Show. It's oh, there close. it is. That's what it is. I was going to say. It seemed like a, it, it could have been a slight dig. Kizarni? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Some AEW, some more AEW news. We got Double or Nothing and the pre-show are now going to be available in the UK on ITV. But the thing is, it's not been announced yet where people in the United States can see it. Well, I'm sure they will. Are you upset by this? No, the I UK think, knows first. Well, I think they should have, you know, announced both at the same time at least because people are waiting on this. You're hearing about this. All these moves AEW are are making. It's May 25th. Yeah. What do you gotta? You gotta. Like tell whoever it is early. Like I'd like to pre-order it. Yeah, most digitally. People, and, but that's what most people want to do. Honestly, that's what most people want to. They want to they're pre-order not doing it, get, that. They want to get out the way. They probably the, don't know yet. There's also a good possibility they're still in the works. They haven't gotten their second paycheck for the month. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no one's pre-ordering. The whole yeah. thing could come crumbling down at any second. Jeez. You got to know in the UK because you got to set all the hours aside of like, all right, shit. Well, how am I going to watch it? Where right. am I going to watch it? Dale. I don't know what ITV is. I am pulling it up right now. Sounds like a failed Apple product. <laughs> <laughs> that shit, that does sound like it. Um, ITV is the largest commercial television network in the UK. I thought that was Sky. No, I thought that was BBC. Shit, we're both wrong. 
<laughs> Things Americans don't know. Oh, I like that song. That should be that's a whole new segment. Although it would be it would be hard to write it because we're all Americans and so we'd be like, I don't know what to have on this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just us scratching our heads until someone British comes into the scene. Uh, I love it. So yeah, and, help uh, us, Mickey Beltran, help us. <laughs> and they announced that they're gonna they're gonna have a special hour long pre show broadcast called Buy In, and they've also changed the name of the over the budget battle royal to the Casino Battle Royale because they got a budget now. Yeah, <laughs> and they're in a casino, <laughs> right? Play it with house money. So yeah, That's smart. I mean, some of the humor is gone now from the over the budget battle royal in its title, but yeah, whatever. We got a right. branding, and now mm-hmm. they can keep that every time they do it and it's uh you know it's all marketing yeah i think this is i think this is great and i'm sure in time i have no fear that they'll announce <laughs> where you'll be able to watch it in the states like right. i don't think they're gonna just let it slide like they'll figure it out <laughs> and for all Somewhere of our UK- on the internet just google it <laughs> and for all of our uk listeners you can get your details on how to access it at www.itvboxoffice.com so that's for everybody over there. Did you, they pay you for that commercial? Not slash UK. They got to add a UK in there. Nope, Otherwise, they're going to American websites. Going to <laughs> the straight.com. No, that won't work for them. It won't get, work. That's, how we, that's how we get them. We're just pinging them over here. <laughs> we'll ping your ass. Go check out some British shit, idiots. <laughs> 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 pip, pip, cheerio, motherfucker. And a story that broke from Marky Extreme himself. At Southern Honor Wrestling this past week, Chris Jericho showed up at the show and then got attacked by Kenny Omega. Unadvertised, those guys showed up. Marky Extreme was there, live in the crowd, got the video up. You know, everybody was retweeting. He was in the crowd or was he trying to get in the stage door and they weren't letting him? Either way, (laughs) one would be in the crowd filming that. That's fair. Uh, Meltzer, you know, pro wrestling sheet, like they all were, he was breaking the story to everybody else on the cutting edge, that guy. Uh, and I, the video is featured in the latest uh, episode of uh, being the extreme. Uh, it's brilliant. It's, you know, they did this last time where like, Hey, if you're at an indie show, <laughs> all bets are off. Like they might just show up and tell their story. And yeah. it was a, it was a big crowd for that show and it looked cool. And yeah, yeah how cool is that to go to a show and you think, Oh, I'm just going to see the regional stuff. Maybe a yeah. special guest yeah. or two. Right. But then the fucking Jericho and Omega's playing out right now. Right. I feel bad for who had to follow, but yeah. Can you imagine looking at the run sheet that day? You'd be like, okay, that's match. All right. I know what they're going to do. What, 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 what? They're not on the you know, poster. Yeah. I don't even think that. <laughs> I, I feel like those guys don't even like nobody else on that card even knows. I feel. Uh, no, they have to. No, I don't think that because uh, then they don't. They, I don't think they trust anybody to put, not put that shit out there. Oh, yeah. Start tweeting. You'll never believe who's in the back with us right yeah. now. Yeah. That's true. Bring them in like they did the Hardys at WrestleMania a couple years yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. Super sneaky like. Oh, that's got it. But still, it's got to be fucked up for the guys. We got to follow that. Like, but, so look, the match we were going to do, we got to change all this headlocks. shit. Headlocks. Just headlocks. <laughs> I'm going to set you on fire, okay? And you're just going to put me through all the glass. That's the only- <laughs> But it's not a hardcore match. Look, that's the only way we're going to get this crowd back, all right? <laughs> did, o- did Omega like get over at the end of this? He, so he got the, he got, he mm-hmm. left Jericho laying? That's right. Left him Ooh. laying. Oh, what do you think? Oh, does that mean? Oh, that so Jericho wins the match now because he was left laying last no, week on just, television. No, I just like it. I like it when because uh, I mean they're going into this with uh, Omega as the baby face. It seems more more so than the other way, even though it's always going to be a split crowd for those two. Yeah, um, but I, know, I I love any sort of build up where the heel gets some comeuppance because it's so rare, right? You know, especially for this crowd because that's I mean, like you said, what a what a goddamn treat to just be in that audience and then even if it even if it's thirty seconds. Of, yeah. of action it's still fantastic because yeah. but the problem is if you're the if you're the guys in the back again you're like man nobody cared about it i had a championship match i was going over i was winning the title tonight i don't know but you know the, it's just a segment so you got to think it all it did was get everybody excited you know it probably, yeah, you might I get you, featured yeah yeah if you're too butthurt about it it's like well you should probably not do this <laughs> right you should probably uh you know do flips not just fists i feel like anybody who followed it probably uh, was in a better position uh, than the people who came before it because people were probably just like, oh, this is a fun indie show. But now it's like, oh, shit, we got to pay attention to everything. You Someone know, might show up. You know what I want to look at now in that footage uh, uh, that I just thought of? Looking at the ref that would be involved because if ooh. the ref doesn't know what's going on, oh, like that's he's the doing best the match part. and then the stuff comes out like, 
he would be the most interesting person to watch. Did it interrupt a match? I can't, can't tell. tell. No like contact. it's the the footage is all being presented. You know what's moment. funny with that with the ref though? All of a sudden he started marking the fuck out. Like he was just riddle. He's in the middle of the match, whatever, and they just come out. He's like, "Oh my god, it's Chris Jericho!" Can I? He start pulling out a cell phone. Can yeah. I get a selfie? Doing selfies, yeah. Would you t- would you sign my autograph book? <laughs> So how do you have an autograph book in the ring? I just never knew. I said, one of these days, I would be in a match and somebody big is going to interrupt. My mama said I was crazy. See, well, and the benefit is that it gets eyes on this company. Like, that's why, if you know, if you're yeah. this company, you go like, oh, I want these two dudes to do something on my show because everybody will talk about my show, mm-hmm. um, which is where, kind of a- where was this Southern Honor Wrestling? Uh, are you looking for location specifically? Is that yeah, be, yeah. Like where I were they? I can provide you that. That was in Canton, Georgia. Oh, weird, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they only have Atlanta. Sound, the well, fact that there's a place called Canton, Georgia. No, it's just, it no. sounds like the weirdest I place to do it. A random yeah. location, right? It, it seems like they would have to go out of their way spe- to specifically be there. I'm sure there. I'm sure it was a convenient stop in there. You know. <laughs> can you imagine the email though that the Booker had to get? Was like, hey, listen, I'm emailing you on behalf of AEW. And he like, it's a bunch of hog shit. It's like, it ain't or just going like, no, thanks. My show's booked already. It's already four and a half hours. No more. <laughs> and we ain't got an that intermission. That sounds like a promoter right there. It really does. <laughs> and that's Slamcast News. Boy, and you thought Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega were wild cards. Well, now there's a rule in effect. <laughs> Maybe that's what influenced them. Who's to say? Uh, but yeah, wild cards on Raw and SmackDown, where s- superstars can come from SmackDown to Raw, or they can come from SmackDown to SmackDown. You know what I'm saying? Direct quotes. <laughs> v- v- <laughs> Vince is a genius, is what you're saying. Vince is a genius. Uh, I say Vince got pressured by NBC Universal. They was like, you need to step these fucking ratings up. Well, it's uh, three superstars, or four, or five, or back to four can be anything really let's all follow the bouncing ball and not vomit from the seasickness as we do it i I speculated that by the time fox arrived that the brand split would essentially be over sure i think this is simply just a step in that direction i don't think it's gonna split it's just now it's you're gonna have those a roman reigns because he's so big on both shows Keep going over and AJ Styles. Yeah, like I said, the brand split's essentially an act. But no, if you I, think about it, like I mean, the but you put a few people. Like if you do it just a few, it's not they, that big of a this deal. This entire week, there was like there was two main shows and like four people were featured for the entire week. Like, yeah, the the branding of superstars being on a show right. has gotten very muddled because they're ha- having to constantly go like, well, they're normally on this show, but the, right. due to yeah. what this latest rule is, it's now this. Like, all right, it's and, hard to follow. I think they're experimenting right now. Sure. Because they have the time until Fox to go like, all right. Let's see how it works. What can we do? Can we flip flop some people back and forth? Does that help us? Is it good? But I think ultimately what suffers is any of the mid card to lower tier people. They're not going to be flip flopped. Nope. And they're not going to get a segment on the show that they normally would. Right. So while it's great that you get to for all the people that went to SmackDown and Raw this week outstanding right. they got to see kofi versus seth and they right. got to see kofi and sammy and aj right that's rad but everybody else is like great i just came to this town and you right. told me the other people showed up and right. it's like it's bad enough i'm usually getting bumped by the big names on my show now i'm getting bumped by the big names on their show right yeah and they said i was reading a report and it was <laughs> I, saying that's something something that will actually affect them actually negatively because they'll be advertising these events like you may get Roman Reigns versus Elias in a rematch, and that Roman Reigns was just on Raw and he can't do it. You know, I feel like that's. I mean, what were you card, saying? Card subject to change, though. That's just the par for the course. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can buy a ticket for any superstar in in particular. I I, I do feel like the execution of this entire thing was a little wonky. A little, <laughs> a little fair. It was wonky night raw, is what it was. <laughs> Um, I always tout how great Vince is on the mic and off the cuff, and just man, this was not an example of it. No, this was one of no. his last. He, he had a speed. rough night, oh, for sure. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the the. Uh, I don't like all the all the the mix match. Like I don't. You know, for me personally, I like it when it's branded and it's even leaked down to the NXT UK and even Kushida's. You know, debut had. You know, Cassius Ono popping back over to his old show. Like it's it's 
why make brands and if you you're the only one making the damn rules anyway so it's <laughs> it's weird for them to just break it all the time and and even eventize it and then just keep having all these after what were they after shakes now what did we say after shocks yeah um it i just then why did you tell us it was important in the first place you set yourself up to fail like i don't i don't understand yeah. you determine the timing of this said shake up so if you're not ready why don't you wait <laughs> i don't know it's just weird that they do this sometimes i agree with you but again like i said i think it's because nbc universal hit them up it, that's what foley even said and that was a couple of reports it was nbc universal was like hey you need to make these pop with the bigger stars so that's why we've get we did that. That was make, a, make the last what? minute when thing on these, them. What do you mean by these? So like a Roman again, a Roman Reigns, the Usos, these stars that will actually bring yeah, more the, viewers and eyes to the product on the channels. But, but, that, but that's not what I asked. You said you said you need to bring these up, meaning you need oh, to numbers, bring numbers, numbers and ratings for what show? Both. But what doesn't make sense to me amongst that is that was the argument I used to talk about back in the day when this was on different networks right right it's not now again, yeah like it's owned by the same place well again you know so NBC, i get what you're saying but again nbc is about to lose one of the shows too they're about to lose smackdown they know that the move is coming so you just probably feel a little bit slightful and just say hey throw these numbers up now of course raw's ratings have not been great we all know that it is not they've not held high ratings in a very long time well it's also a different time like you you the, the there's no conceivable way you can hold ratings up to the ratings of old. Right. People don't watch TV that way anymore. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it, just not, those numbers aren't feasible. N nothing is getting those. Like they, are, it's weird. It's weird when they do report the ratings that a lot of those don't even contain the plus seven numbers as they call them of like, you know, right. You watch it within that first week. I mean, why that, that would be mostly everyone that I know. So it's, it's weird that they don't often count those when they announce the, the ratings, but, yeah, I don't know. I think I think Scotty nailed it on the head. I think this is just them experimenting and playing um, because right now it's low stakes to do so. Mm -hmm. um, we're right after Mania. The reset button has been hit. We just did a superstar shakeup, so nobody's in a really tight storyline um, right. with the exception of people who are carrying storylines over from pre-Mania like Miz and, and Shane and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Right. So like now is the time to just screw around and just sort of, you know, throw shit against the wall and see what sticks. I feel it's uh, and you could say you could say it was bad for some of the lower card people, but hey, they should just take Finn Balor's advice and fucking head back home. Right. Take a little <laughs> vacay. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's, you know, you ain't on the card, you know, get some get some business done. Go see the fam. I feel bad for the casual fan or someone post mania that is trying to get in. And these past two weeks were probably the most confusing television right. to watch and go, yeah. I don't, I, I can't follow this. So if they couldn't follow it. Did they lose people? Did they lose some casual people or did they lose some regular people and go, I'll come back when it makes more sense. I, mean, I would argue that the casual fan doesn't care because the casual fan probably didn't know what show people were on in the first place. So it's not like they tuned into SmackDown and were like, Oh, I expect to see X, Y, and Z. And, why is A, B, and C here? Like, uh, you know. And all the commentary is telling you is <laughs> That's, yeah. trying to explain it, trying to explain these huge math algorithms along with the fucking ricochet thing that occurred <laughs> as well with that over explanation. Wait, what? I, mi I must have missed that part with the explanation with that. So we had the match on Raw with Ricochet versus Robert Roode. Right. And we we're told like, okay, so we're going to explain why this is going to happen. And uh, there's the money oh, in the yeah. bank contendership online. And here's what happened on the weekend. Like, they tell us everything. They set all this up, and then, oh, and look, he just did the, the his finishing move, and it's over. Well, uh, nothing changed. Right. Yeah. So okay, I get what you're talking about. We're in these yeah. modes of the commentary now is telling story upon story, explaining A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And it's like, wait, hold on. Can I just right. enjoy the match that I'm watching? No. And then there was nothing that came of it. They're trying too hard. They're trying yeah. very hard. Yeah. It's they're, very they're, confusing. They're trying to build an extended universe and sell some fucking books and novels on the side with some of this backstory and unnecessary rules. It's like, how about you just put wrestlers on TV and make them not like each other for an hour? Yeah. Or three. <laughs> or three or four, ten a week. Well, when you build up to all these big, these quote unquote big angles and big events, like now Money in the Bank, you know, all this. There's I like, only I like four. that you said quote unquote, as if any of them are not big angles or big events. Come well, on now. Some of them really aren't. Let's just be honest. Some of them really aren't. They okay, make it be seem honest. Okay, I'll be, be honest. honest. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Honest. Uh, some of them aren't. They just call it big events, but that's just to make a storyline seem more interesting. Like what? Intriguing. What's not a big event to you? I'm curious. I want your opinion. 
Uh, Fast Lane is never a big event. Um, what's another one that is a waste of space? Uh, <laughs> I agree with Fast Lane. They they definitely market it to be as such, but we generally don't get anything changing from that. Okay, so I agree. I mean, Money in the Bank is it, you know the Money whole is huge. It is it's a star maker. Yeah, it's a champion maker. Yeah, unless you piss off people in the bank. Because Intercontinental, they this the Money in the Bank has surpassed the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, agreed. fair, fair. Which was the like, oh, they're on their way. Right, hundred percent. Money in the Bank is now. Oh, chances are they're going to be champions. Right, so, right, right. like you're 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 good, or you know that they're featured so much that they're such a bigger character. Yeah. That it's still more than what the Intercontinental or U.S. title do for a wrestler. Right. Which have, have barely been on TV in recent weeks, right. either of those yeah. titles. Finn Balor like went Finn home. Was literally- I wanted to see like his mom or someone holding <laughs> the, the camera title. Well, you have to watch my kids at WWE Superstar on the WWE Network. <laughs> well, I, know, I think they were doing, because uh, they got the live events coming up over there. So probably that's why he went early. <laughs> He was like, Fuck, you, you know, think it, you think that's the reason, not because they. Didn't oh no, no, that too. That too. We don't, we don't like, want you to wrestle beforehand. Go, go rest. Be ready. <laughs> go hang with your family. Tell the trucks where to go when they arrive. <laughs> we need you to translate. It's like yeah, they, we speak English there. Yeah. Still, <laughs> that that said, I'd I'd really enjoyed that match though with Ricochet and Robert Roode. I thought it was a surprisingly excellent match, and we hadn't seen uh, that before. So. It was great. Yeah, I agree. Like it was, it was cool. Uh, I just don't know why to add all that stuff in the storytelling of it when we still have one more week. So why not let Rude beat him one more time and then right plant wait, those seeds. wait up until the last moment or have him be on the mic and go like, sure. if I beat you tonight, like I should get your spot. I'm like you will never beat me. Yeah, because there's a three other people he damn sure not gonna beat. He can't beat uh, Drew McIntyre. It's just weird how the stuff plays out, but the stuff that we're getting from it is cool. It's it, just a very confusing overall uh, presentation. It's interesting that this didn't really have yeah. any sort of uh, you know effect on the main storyline. Uh, one could assume that because it was cut from a Hulu episode. The I, whole thing. I, the, hearing this is the first I've heard of this match that happened. Oh wow! Yeah, again, what? You just yeah. react. Well, like, there you go. I guess you to your point. There yeah. it is. <laughs> wow. But look, we gotta we gotta talk about the opening of the show yes. with Kofi coming out and the crowd going ballistic. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's just I I love seeing that when there is just a a superstar that is just universally loved. Yes. By the crowd, it's not the split. It's just like nope, we love you unconditionally. We're gonna cheer. I miss that. There's a lot of gray area with the superstars now. Where it's like, oh, you can love or hate him. There's everybody's merch. a tweener. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and it's fine. You, that it exists how it is. But when there's just a a unabashedly loved face, yeah, it's just the best. Um, and this, yeah, again, this opening of Raw was just a fucking clusterfuck <laughs> um, of them trying to explain, like, oh, Roman just showed up for the sake of showing up, but we don't really know why. Well, he well they did. Up. Well, they did it. They were trying to build with it on Twitter and yeah. different social media. Hey, he's defying WWE. But, re- but he rules. didn't specify what he just said. I have unfinished business on raw. So I I'm wish he would have said directly we, with. Yeah. yeah. We never figured out what that was. No, it was, it was the Drew McIntyre. <laughs> was that what it was? Yep. That's well, exactly. he, he, he doesn't say it is. Oh, I assume there's a check that, you know, <laughs> he forgot to pick up his final check. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I wish the motivation had been there because it could have been a lot cooler than it was. Like for Roman to say via tweet that he's coming to Raw, it didn't really. I don't. I didn't really understand it, or under, you know, besides like, hey, screw the man. But even that didn't really feel like why. I mean, but why though? Yeah, because he's he's going to be at SmackDown. He was, <laughs> you know, we know that Vince yeah. is going to be there too. When you're hearing the superstars yeah. going like, yeah, I, you know, AJ Styles going like, oh, I'm, I love it. I'm on Raw now. This right. is great. And then to come back on SmackDown, like, oh man, I missed you. <laughs> this is the house that I built. Like, it's, it's the best two, ever. It's been two weeks. Holy shit! Like, yeah. which which is it? <laughs> That's another thing. They made it seem like they've been gone from these shows for so fucking long mm-hmm. when it's literally just been two weeks. Like, <laughs> he, he used to be on this show. Oh, it was just 14 days ago. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, mm-hmm. they don't make these big... But, but to, their, to their credit, though, the crowd acted like it had been forever, too. They're like, whoa, the Usos. Ah! Well, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> I mean, they're just excited to see the wrestlers they like. They don't care that they're not, you know, like, guess what? These people but in they, the arena they haven't seen pop. them in way more than two weeks. Also, it made it nice uh, seeing I, the WWE championship on Raw. Sorry about the deal. 
Oh, I was just going to say, I think AJ got a bigger pop back on SmackDown than he did on Raw. I agree. People, yeah, people were surprised to see him well, for some reason. House, <laughs> plus, it's the house that AJ Styles built. Remember? Uh, no, I've heard that somewhere. He I don't. He don't live there no more. He <laughs> don't. <laughs> you abandoned me. <laughs> really? We, we just went to the Faith Evans. Uh, <laughs> Sammy Zayn out here just dogging the crowd, and I feel like it's part shoot, part work. The way he's like, you just get what you want. You just want the certain things, and he just keeps calling them out until finally they say, "Yeah, somebody's gonna shut him up." And who's gonna shut him up? Braun Strowman. Did you get? Did that get yeah. cut from you, Hulu? No, no. I, okay. I, I I saw this and I was irritated by it because it did nothing for either Sammy or Braun Strowman. Um, and I couldn't believe this. There's a part where he you was mean Casey Jones and the Shredder. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because of the dumpster thing. Yeah, it didn't. Yep. It didn't compress though. If it would have compressed, I bet it, it, it would have been better. That's what they made it sound like was about to happen when he got dumped in the dumpster. Like it was finna just go. <laughs> cool. You you cool with this murder there, Braun? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what you get for talking too much you get squished to death yeah I don't, it's, honestly Sammy's awesome but again here's a guy who two segments he was featured on both Raw and Smackdown in fact they had a championship match in the latter um, and uh, god he's doing so good uh, as a heel I hang on every word he's mm-hmm. doing such a good job of being hated when he comes His out entrance. and he, he immediately goes over to the, a fan and he just, I think it was SmackDown where he walked over and he like pretended to kick one of the fans. Did you see that? Yeah. And then he had like a five minute interaction with this one person. <laughs> and ever since he had that entrance where he came out so excited and he fell down. Right. Half the time he'll do the fall down too. Yes. Which is like, oh, I'm going to work it in. <laughs> he's a guy that plays and, uh, the squeaky door. Like yes. whatever happens, happens. And he's rolling with it. And I love yeah. it. God. Um, because and even, I would, I would contest Jake that the, uh, Sammy benefits from the trash can because he got to have a whole shtick out of it. Exactly. Of, of what, what smells. And, and that was, I mean, and you know what? They yes. don't have a lot of continuity for that kind of joke telling. So I was surprised by that. Right. He, he benefited from it segment on SmackDown, I would say. Yeah. But when yeah. he gets his ass beat by Braun on Raw next week, um, it's not going to help him at He's all. He's not necessarily a wild card. He could be one of the four or seven or 12 or three. We don't know. That's the whole part about it. It's wild. But yes, the Dale's point, that was that was total Memphis right there. Like okay. Sammy didn't brush it off. He played into it. Yeah. And then it was the chant and then it sort went of, through the match. Like it was great. That was fine. That's fair. That's totally fair. But uh, I, I just feel like I'm over Braun being a baby face, beating up small dudes that are heels. Oh, so do well, you prefer Lars just... Sullivan being a yeah. heel and not saying anything and yeah. For... boringly beating up yes. people? I would like to say something about that. Uh, I understand that when you get to be an extra, they tell you you're going to probably take a bump here or there. It's a nice little between three to $500 paycheck, right? You're not finna just pay me five hundred dollars to have Lars Sullivan just throw the fuck out me into a ring post like that was just. Is that you're never gonna get in the business? <laughs> Jesus, because <laughs> I was like, I get, I get, we we're keeping him as dominant, this big monster, no matter what. Mm-hmm. But he just picked that did, one did, dude up and just looked. Did he beat the shit out of the No Way Jose's conga line? Yes, the he buds? did. Oh, beat, right, right, right. Oh, my God. Did he buds, he yeah. beat the, he threw the fuck out of like it was one dude. I, somebody was like, "Yo, you gonna get in the ring?" And take a bump from him. And I was like, yeah, you you just wanted to make sure you got a chance to DVR that for your mama. Like, want to watch me get this ass whooping? <laughs> no way Jose got beat up so bad he should change his name to fuck this, Jose. <laughs> he, he beat the green out his braids and that ass whooping. <laughs> fuck this, Jose. <laughs> fuck this, Jose. <laughs> it's catchy. It's catchy. It's, it's got a ring to it. Uh, can I ask you guys a question? Can I ask you guys a question? No. no. I'm, I'm besides add, that one? Besides that one. How do you all feel about what the revival is going through with this embarrassment thing? Didn't see it. Oh, oh, again, oh, cut from your Hulu. Yeah. So the revival were supposed to face Gallows and Anderson. And before they did, here come the Usos, just come out. They're like, hey, 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 Uso, hold on, hold on, hold on. They have this product that's supposedly like Icy Hot. It's called Usi Hot, where you rub it on and it just, it's sweat activated and it burns up. And so the moment they say it and give the little countdown, all of a sudden, it heats up and the revival's on fire. They're like, oh, my God, they're burning up, and they run up the ramp, and the Usos try to give them a bottle of water, and they pour it down their pants. And they're like, no, you're supposed to drink it, not pour it on there. It makes it worse. And so the revival just jumping around like they're burning up from almost a... Jake, Jake, it's worse than it sounds. <laughs> I was going to say, this <laughs> actually sounds, really, like a, no, that sounds like a great segment. It is, when in, in Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, it yes. was fantastic. Yes. Uh, this... Credit to oh boy, is it Dawson that's got 
the bald head and like the yes. yeah, sort of yeah. yep. with the chops. Yeah. Dawson went out. Dawson went all out. He gave it his all. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, <laughs> other one. That's why. Not so much. Look like he didn't want to punch himself in the face. Like really? he had uh, jumped he, Bret Hart. I think, I think I think he felt like he was punching himself in the face. Though. <laughs> yeah, that was. But I think Dawson, he he's like, this is the thing. All right. I'm, I'm embarrassed and I'm doing it. So it's like. I don't think that's demeaning or anything like that. It's it's all in how you do it. Right. Like you're the bad guys. Right. You're supposed to have bad shit happen to you. We want to see that. So roll with it. That's your that's your role. So when I feel like one of them is not into it, then it's it mo- sucks. It's more noticeable. Yeah. Okay. And the crowd's like, eh, okay. But Dawson tried. And that's the thing I think too for me is the crowd. You can tell the crowd is just not for it. Like the vignette that the vignette they did last week with them in the shower with the back shaving. It was something that led up to it that we got to see that, even because, though the the video was a letdown because they made it seem like it was going to be so much more. Because in part, like a lot of people like the revival, they wanted them to get a chance, right. and the revival aren't bad guys. No, right. Especially when one beats the fuck out of the guy that jumped Bret Hart. Like right. they've done nothing to to get this treatment for the crowd to love them being fucked with. Sure. Like 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 Robbie Roode is better to be made fun of and be yes. embarrassed because yes. he he yeah. presents himself in a way that's like I'm unembarrassable, I'm greatness. Whereas and I'm done with are, Chad Gable. Yeah, these are just like two normal dudes who uh, they yeah. claim they're the best. I, I get it. Yeah. And they were for a time. So it's you you got to establish right. them being shitheads right. to be shit upon, I think. <laughs> And what was the? I didn't understand so the implication of why? Why were they? Why did they use the Usi hot on their like balls and butt? That's what I'm saying. It made no sense. It just happening. Like all of a sudden, I don't know. It wouldn't make no sense. Well, how I think you, the Usos. How would you use it? Uh, look, Mandy Rose had that whole story with like going after one of the Usos and like was trying to get with them and everything. I think the Usos are trying to get with the revival. Oh. they're filming them <laughs> in the shower. They're getting products that are working on the balls of the ass. That's like true, they Scotty. got Whoa. they got some going Which on. Also, there. That's also something to me. I this may be personal. I don't know how you guys feel. The Usos coming in and the first people they go towards is the revival. I know we talked about it, but shouldn't you be veering towards the tag titles? You know, trying to get that way. I still think this all should be Zach and Kurt doing these shenanigans. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. or, or yeah. you doing the shenanigans instead doing of doing the shenanigans, yeah. okay. not the Usos. Make like them- the Usos are fine. Like they're they're covered. But, yeah, they don't need as- to become the new day. They are the Usos. Like, they we know yeah. what they do. Right. Yeah. We don't need them to all of a sudden start being zany and funny, even though like they can be that as their own version of it. Yeah. But we don't need them. We don't need them fucking puncting people. But we need yeah, other right. character development from other people. Yeah. <laughs> you, they just got X'd. Yeah. Them, you right, Jimmy. It. Because <laughs> what happens? We get a we get a pre show kickoff match and Money in the Bank, and then what? We go back to figuring out if the Usos are going to go towards Hawkins and Ryder if they keep the titles. Over the Viking Raiders. You're thinking about this way more than they are. I, yeah. I, I, You're I, fired. I, You're fired. I, 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 <laughs> but I have ideas. You don't stop have, have stop ideas. picking up tag teams <laughs> you don't have during, to... during those Roman Reigns meeting. You're <laughs> fucking fired. You can move out of Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. Go back to Southern Hunter Wrestling, you bastard. We got another Firefly Funhouse, though. And it got, this one got even, it's been getting darker and darker every week. Did you see this one, Jake? Yeah, of course. This one, I, I only reason I have to ask is like with Hulu, like hey, certain it's stuff. On, it's on both shows. They, oh that, yeah, this is true. That's this is true. in both of them. They're not yeah, cutting that. This is true. This shit just got dark. Yo, Mercy the Buzzard murdered Ramblin' Rabbit. Okay. It was tele- one down, two to go. <laughs> I mean, listen, he's a he's a he's a wild animal. Like he just ate another animal. I, I always feel like we put murder, we put these human uh, things <laughs> onto oh, animals. Like does a does a tiger murder a gazelle? No, he's just sometimes oh, when they shit. got a knife. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Here yeah. we go. <laughs> um, nice purse. Did this stay honestly, away from my wife, you bastard. <laughs> this whole this whole segment was hilarious and weird, and I love. A buzzard calling Ab an old hag. <laughs> like, it got kind of mean. Like, like, Shut up, you old hag. It got really mean spirited, which I dug. I do think that the puppeteering of the buzzard is just so tragic. So it's, tragic. It's weird. Like, like, there's, it doesn't seem like there's anything underneath the head. So it keeps yeah. hitting the side of the box. Therefore, the collar sticks out like he doesn't have and, anatomy. And it, and it, yeah, it stays there. Yeah. And then the only part of the beak that moves is the, the tip. tip. Yeah, the it's, tip. <laughs> Yeah, they need to yeah, get what some. What the hell? Someone had to stick their hand so far into that thing's head to make that tip move, too. It's I'm very not, weird visual. I'm not even touching that one. Yeah, the Usos <laughs> will. <laughs> it's best left alone. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Uh, and, 
<laughs> also, sorry about that, Jake. Also, the ha- like we had the little cut in real quick with the with the gloves, with the hurt and heal yeah, gloves. Fun to remind us <laughs> <laughs> what's actually going on. I don't that know. We I'm, actually I'm, are I'm, heading somewhere one day. I'm still I'm middle ground with these. Like the the production and the the sound effects with the kids and all that was better this week. I thought I they that. interjected that more. I'm not passing judgment on it overall, saying like, oh, it's not working or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just we're still waiting. The moments, yeah. And there's good moments in it, and then sometimes it's like it's so off the beaten path. And we see the stuff with the kids at the end. It's like, all right, Mexican yeah, all kid, children, with, children Mexican children kid with sombrero, nice it, touch. And it would have been honestly the kids. I think it would have been better if they didn't try to do the weird. They're all sad. If they made them all happy and gleeful, it would have been more creepy because they could have been celebrating this dead rabbit and throwing his head around and uh, shit and playing. Like it's a weird. It was a weird decision to have them all somber. Uh, another issue I have: I don't think they need to cut back to the crowd. The, the live oh, arena oh. audience. Yeah, they that shit's that. been happening yeah. since Cena and Rock. Yeah, they I mean, I get, I get, that. no, I get that with those other backstage. I, I think for this one, in particular, let let the vignette itself just live. You know what I'm saying? Never show me a crowd watching television right. that I'm watching. Right. Yeah, I <laughs> understand. This is the show. The logo's on the bottom. Yeah. It's part of the show. And also, when you get that crowd watching TV. And then you see like the four or five that turn around and then like look at their phone. I was or gonna something. say yes, especially if they're bored. Don't show me bored people watching the thing you want me to be excited about. Because that's show what it me, looks like. Show me if anything. Like the cut to is the like the the way wide shot with like the Creed music video right. when you're building the arena. Yes. Like show me the whole thing. Yeah. With a screen in the background, it's like look at the thousands of people that are here taking in this moment, not forty. <laughs> And like, <laughs> is this the first week? Grandma done? Edna's like, I don't care for. Is this, this right. the first week they done it, or did they do it? No, I've seen that. I've seen it a couple of times. Like okay. cutting to the crowd. They've, they've well, no, no, I'm talking about for the Firefly Funhouse one specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, they they've, they've cut to the crowd almost every time. I think yeah. for the Firefly. Okay, I didn't. I couldn't recall. It's but, the only which, difference between the Raw and the SmackDown versions. <laughs> which, yeah, I don't. I don't know what the idea of that is. Is to establish to a the whole viewing trans. audience that it's like, oh, um. Is, no, 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 no. I know that looks weird on TV. Or you're not sure if that's Bray Wyatt or not. But look, there's people in a crowd. So you're clearly watching wrestling. Like, Maybe, I don't right. think that makes it yeah. more clear. Or, or could it be? There's no ring. The, the the people in the audience that they're showing that little section are the fireflies, even though they're bored. It shouldn't no. know they're bored. That's and weird. they're just in trance. Don't hurt yourself from that reach. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I was just like. <laughs> Money in the bank's I coming mean, up later. Going to some, gonna have to get some Uso cream for that shoulder. Some yeah. Uso hot. <laughs> Um, I think that I think that they should only cut to an audience person if it is someone worthy of like a uh, what, what do they call her Ms. Girl yeah. or whatever you know like someone who who shows how the audience should feel or could feel. I think like those are worthy crowd shots. But yeah, to just show us that we're in an arena, it's like yeah, okay, I get it. I un- I don't understand. What, this. Uh, well, just you you omitted yourself. What about a, a Dale or slam? <laughs> right right or the or that what year was that where you were the where you were the little cut to uh it was when cena and and um lesnar lesnar had their first like just cena got his ass whooped just 16 whatever year that was. yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah 16, the, they yeah. cut to dale's face the og and Suplex he shocked City. yeah i was shocked yes it even made the like fan reaction thing they made that year or whatever i don't I don't know what that show was called. It's framed on your wall. We get it. It's framed. It's my wallpaper. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> they even called him up and asked him to move to Connecticut. He was very confused. Yeah. We need you to live here and have this wallpaper. So let's, let's, I want to wrap this up with this. If you don't guys don't mind. I know you want to, but yeah. who says you're I'm going just, to? I mean, just this, the Bray Wyatt fun, fun house thing. I how, want him to wear I would the like same a article of clothing. How long do time. we, la- how long does the, the uh, Firefly fun house vignettes last? How long do we, Keep going with that before he's back in the ring. To the XFL. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. Scott, XFL, Jake. Um, They're going to stop them and then play it a Molina promo. And then he's never going to debut as this version of Bray Wyatt. <laughs> that is not uh, an this, unlikely scenario. They, I, I could see <laughs> us never seeing this Bray Wyatt in the ring ever hey we still haven't seen mojo i i don't know how many he, other like sort of oh my goodness he actually yeah, did a, mojo he debuted at? on may of main event yeah that's okay. not a debut uh, oh, well we haven't seen know. mojo yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, okay you don't watch main event don't act fair, like fair you. enough i'm not gonna say i do man i was watching main event like yo mojo raleigh with a hood on like i can't no. besides besides the live audience i would i would really like someone needs to let us know who is watching main event 
that isn't accidentally watching it in the crowd before the show that they came to see. Said I watched one a couple of weeks ago in hopes that they were going to show the Luke Harper right. EC3 match, but it was not on. And then I just started reading the descriptions from then on out. And it's like, <laughs> nope, nope. Tim- <laughs> Tamina in singles action. Oh, fuck this show. <laughs> But I guess, hey, with the uh, with the wild cards, that is where you're going to have to see all the, your other favorite superstars right. that you want to see on television. They're on main events. So I guess the, the, enough, the, all the main event. very ironically named main event. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Event. <laughs> Should we call it WWE, <laughs> WWE event? <laughs> um, no need to RSVP. Oh, we had WWE title match. We had a rematch from WrestleMania and... Uh, I with two wild card people. I was so f- afraid that Kofi hurt himself and that that back body drop to the outside. Oh my god, yeah. that's right. That was yeah, horrifying to me. I have an issue with this match and even the one they did. We'll talk about on SmackDown. But I thought this was going to be one they were like, "Oh, we're going to give it back to Daniel Bryan on Raw at first. Yeah, I never, I, I never saw that. That happened. Like maybe some. Like, they got me at one point. Right? Yeah, they got me. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, no way, I'm not gonna lose it. And then the match was so good. It's like, oh shit, he's gonna lose. Right, because it was a. It wasn't one of those little quick 10, 15 minute just. All right, let's do this. Get it it's over a with. Great match. This was a great mm-hmm. match. And you were like, uh, there's a possibility. That's what I'm saying. It got me at that point too. I was like, there's a possibility, but to have Kofi go over clean, I was cool with that. Um, I, especially after uh, escaping, like how many attempts at like label locks and all the. You yes. know I mean, like there was a lot of. Those things where it's like, oh, the fighting spirit of Kofi Kingston lives on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they did the exact same thing on SmackDown <laughs> with more fighting spirit of Kofi Kingston. But, but I like still, him great. making the challenges yeah. and him being open to it and them establishing uh, this is a great story. Like Kofi's getting the benefit of all the other things that no one else is yes. right now. He's yeah. getting all yep. the character building. He's getting all the story and establishing like I've thought about being a fighting champion for years and this is how I want to establish my legacy. Like, yeah, it's, it's so cool. It's interesting. His cup is overflowing when other people are fucking thirsty. <laughs> just thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> and he is like, oh, you know, shit, it, I, can't, I need more cups. <laughs> I wish that that was kind of the, uh, if they're going to do such a wild card thing, I wish it was just like a, the titles were just like a hall pass kind of vibe where right. mm-hmm. if you're a champ, then you, then you can show up to either show. That's like your privilege as champ to just do whatever the hell you want. If there's going to be this wild card scenario, at least there would be some kind of reason or like AJ was just like, well, I got here for, of course I had to get here early because I was going to, I was going to be the wild card. It's like, Oh, it's just like who doesn't have anything to do earlier in the day. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. This is like a weird like, vibe. That it's, it's like, listen, like, if you don't, don't want to see your enough. talk to your children via Skype, then yeah. head on down to the <laughs> arena and you could be this week's wild card. Did your girlfriend throw you out of the apartment? Come on down to the arena. You can be a wild card. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, very straight. But yeah, I would rather it just be that the champions get like an extra privilege or something. Then it would just all they need is just a reason. I I feel like they overthink things or don't think them at all. I'm not I I teeter on which side of that. (laughs) And Um, but I I just wish that they would just give us a reason. That's all we're ever really looking for. Speaking of champions potentially having privilege, we have new SmackDown tag team champions, which I'm glad they had to earn it because it looked like it wasn't going to happen for a second. With Daniel Bryan and Rowan, it like Shane McMahon was just like, here's the belts. Go ahead, take them. You guys are champs. I'm always cool with that for a bad guy team to be give, given by a bad guy. Okay. Like, I have no issue with that. I think that makes sense. Like, Triple H had gotten the World right, Heavyweight everybody. title via Eric Bischoff, like, right. and everyone's pissed that he didn't earn it, and then going through and cheating his way to retain it. Like, that makes sense. In fact, I'm actually bummed that they had... It was a great match, but I was actually... Mm-hmm. I loved that he was just going to hand them the titles. I, I was like, this is great. It's been a while since we've done this, and it makes... It gives them even more heat. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Two things. It. I'm going to find the... I'm, this is where I'm looking on my phone. I'm, I'm prefacing that. Uh, yeah. Because there was a, a great email that I saw after the fact that WWE sent about SmackDown... And uh, so I'm looking for it okay. right okay. now. So. Two things, Dale and Jake. One, did you think they were going to automatically have like new earthy tag titles under those belts? No, because they didn't know that they were. it was happening. I did enjoy the nod after the match where Daniel went like, we got to change these. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that. But I don't know. I love this. I, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Jay Washington here and be like, I called this. I called this like three weeks ago when we were talking about who should be champions. Yeah, you did say um, it. You honestly, did. I, <laughs> there's no other tag teams on the company but ah, we got heavy hold machinery on. that's why i brought up this email Ooh, i'm excited because this email was on tuesday and it had a little banner at the bottom 
and it said, who will be the next SmackDown tag team champions? And in the picture are all the other people that did not contend for these titles. We have Heavy Machinery. We have the B team. We have New Day and we have uh, Nakamura and Rusev. Okay. So that's what was so dumbfounding of the, like, they all just stood in the back, I guess, and went, <laughs> well, I guess they're going to get the tag team titles. Hey, the uh-huh. Usos. Well, also, <laughs> they're wild cards, so we can't do anything about it. Also, talk, <laughs> talk about being uh, daddy's least favorite child. You're literally Shane McMahon's lackeys, and he didn't give you the titles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. No shit. <laughs> like B-Team being like, but we saved your ass like five times. We beat Shane McMahon's ass for you. You gave it to Daniel Bryan and the big guy. That's not fair. And then, oh, you're going to let the other guys challenge for it that's right. not even on the show? Don't right. you hear the commentators bleeding out of their ears right now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was Scott. It's so funny, funny that you mentioned that email because I also kept waiting for the setup in the beginning segment when it was Kofi and Xavier. I was like, oh, okay, well, they're just going to set up this tag team match real quick, you know, at the top of the show. I guess this is going to be the main story thread Mm -hmm. for the whole episode. Nope, I had nothing to do with it. They never even said anything about. I was like, what? Why did they send that dumb email out? Like, it was like, (laughs) why do I always fall for the dumb shit? (laughs) Who will be it? None of them. <laughs> Nobody None of them is better. In contention. Watch like, main event to see all of them. Like, I like that they send out a, <laughs> an email before Money in the Bank. Like, who's going to be this year's Mr. Money in the Bank? And it's just eight participants that aren't in the match, <laughs> even though they've announced the participants. <laughs> Alex Lock. Riley. Lock. Alex Riley. <laughs> Alex Riley. Alex Riley. David Otunga. <laughs> no, okay. Just want to throw that one in. Uh, <laughs> both, is, both is absurd as the next, really. <laughs> Uh, so it, great segment overall. I like them, you know, acknowledging yeah. Yeah, the, the, for the titles. And I, I went off on this. I made a video for Patreon about uh, Mother Trucker losing major points during the segment because uh, he doesn't know how audio works, I guess. Who? So as much as I, I praise Sami Zayn for being an amazing performer, Mother Trucker is less deserving of his name and should be called Dumb Motherfucker because we see... Oh boy. Daniel Bryan and Rowan walking and talking. You hear at a normal voice level, right? Dale knows where I'm going with this. Uh, And then Otis sees them and says a little something. And then fucking mother trucker starts peas and carrots. He he whispers, but he's not saying anything. There's all sorts of audible noises happening around of the car parking (laughs) and this and that. And he's a random random chicken clucking for some reason. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And he says nothing, but he's making words with his mouth. Yeah. And then I'm not done. And then sorry. No, uh, I was like, I must've missed all this. uh, It was cut from your Hulu. No, you you didn't because it was right after I went to the bathroom. I then how did you hear what I told you before when he said, when he said, oh, we got to change these titles? It was uh, that same no, exact moment. No, because it looked like that's what he was saying to him in the ring when they were holding up oh, the belt. I oh, that. I thought he saw that. He's like, yeah. I'm peeing now. Yeah. And then closing <laughs> his ears and then ran away. <laughs> yes, sir. So then Mother Trucker is just doing that. He yeah. keeps doing that. And then Daniel Bryan and Rowan talk again. And yeah. then Otis also mumbles <laughs> a little something. And Mother Trucker just keeps going. Be scared. Yeah. Like nothing. Yeah. I, oh, oh, it was so infuriating so to weird. see that stupidity. I mean, like, what are you doing? Do you think this was a last minute decision and they were just like, could just go throw out there and that they're not confident enough to just do their own thing or which is well, weird because if we didn't think that before. We certainly think it now. <laughs> yeah, but it's speak or don't speak like right. we see you. Yeah. This is on television. What is going on? This is played out so bizarrely and is so poor because I I'm a performance guy and that was yeah. a terrible performance by Mother Trucker. That's fair. I think he got his because that's like a move that you would do inside the ring, right? Where you're like yes. pretending to yell or pretending, you know, and and he got his ring brain mixed up with his backstage brain <laughs> and just like couldn't not do it because that's just what he thought he was supposed to do and wasn't aware of his surroundings in any which way, which obviously right. just shows how super green he is at performing which you know you'd kind of guess that anyway right by the way even just just talking about a segment (laughs) that jay missed while peeing made jay have to pee he just straight up got up and went to the bathroom (laughs) he is like he's like i'm gonna miss this segment for the second time that's what he's trying (laughs) there's some trigger word in there that makes him urinate we got to figure it out isolate it and then we can just make him pee whenever we want (laughs) when uh, he comes back changing belts otis I think those are two top contenders right there. Mother trucker. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Try mother trucker. <laughs> it's interesting, though, that it, it is interesting that they did this backstage because there are two guys who 
haven't been able to tone it down since their debut. Two guys who have been too big and have right. spoken too many words uh-huh. <laughs> and never know how to quite stop. And, and Otis's face is going to explode. Right. Well, I will say this. I, I it really does look that way. I think maybe they are turning the knob down on them a little bit. A little bit? To try to make them Hello. more contenders. Because even they're like... They had on like just the denim and they clearly have like a new gimmick that they're going with the blue collar or something. Yeah, blue collar oh, yeah. dorks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, blue collar dorks. That's their I think that's new, what it was. It's their new tag team name. Uh, but um, uh, let me also update you for something via that email for you, Jake. Oh, I love it. Replica titles. I know you're a big fan. Ugh. The hemp title, the the WWE hemp title yes. is now available. Can you buy it for, for me? For sale. Can you buy it for me? Just make more Patreon videos, buddy. You'll get it in no time. Yay! <laughs> Um, I want that title hanging on the wall. I know you do. I That's why it. I mentioned it because it's gorgeous and and one hundred percent. I hope that was not a throwaway, and I do hope next week we do get uh, Earth friendly tag titles because that would be great. Also, I, I prefer it Money yes, in the Bank or like you know a big event. So yes, you do something. Yes. Like that. Or uh, sorry, the main event. Do it at main event. <laughs> at, at main event. Um, hey, uh, Jay. So what is the trigger word for you having to pee now that you're back? Because <laughs> clearly it happened last time when you were watching the show. Uh, Otis. Does Otis make you have to pee? Do you, oh, shit, he's getting oh, no. up again. Oh, no. Oh, he's pooping. Oh, oh. <laughs> Heavy machinery. Um, <laughs> anyways, I love, I love it. It's, <laughs> it was an accident from his childhood. Of, Anything. I, involved. Into it. I, I just happened to go to the bathroom. Also, I've been drinking a lot of water, and I'm trying to flush my system out again. But you nonetheless. You don't need to know that. <laughs> you could have just said I had to go to the bathroom. Well, you thought it was a key. What are you, what are you flushing your system out for? Huh? Did you say you're flushing your system out? You got a drug test coming up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you borrow some urine and hair, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, just trying to get myself together. No point. I appreciate that. No point. No point. That, that's the name of Scott's autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Rounded edges. <laughs> How'd you guys like that Ali Andrade match? I loved Orton. He was oh, great. my God. Yeah. True. It's that guy, true, that guy, though. that guy, what? that guy has an undeniable it factor. And when he wants to turn on, that crowd goes nuts for him because I wanted, I was hoping the crowd would be into them, but they had some yeah. wonky promos beforehand. It was kind of neat what Ali did, but they just haven't had the screen and character time, I think, to get every right. single crowd involved. But then when Orton comes out and just, you know, look, just looking up at the briefcase, like, right. fuck, you are good. Yeah. Sometimes you bore me and sometimes you're interesting, but. When you, you got are me, good. you got me, yeah. And I feel like this, you know, crowd, the NXT audience was already invested. You know, like that kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. But it's like you said, there was something missing in promos or in the buildup to get the rest of the crowd behind. I Something, Ali's never been able to quite regain what he had before he was injured. Yeah. And I think that's hurting him. And uh, as great as Andrade is, he needs an ultimate baby face to be up against. I and do, right now, Ali's not quite it yet. I think those pro- yeah. those promos felt extra long for me. Like, I was like, okay, we're just filling time out. Is it right just because you don't speak the language? Is that why? Because no. it always seems long to me when I don't know what they're saying. Well, no, I, I know where Ali does his promos yeah. at. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like, but it just felt like the promos were so long to build up this match. Ali's, yeah, it was, while it was interesting and shot different, it's like, all it was, right. Yeah, it was long. And it almost felt like he was reaching at one point. Like, and so... That's why sure. I'm gonna win it. The light, because of the light. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Zelda Rubenstein in Poltergeist. Yes, it it, it was. I, I think it it was the right idea for sure. I, I that was kind of what he was doing before, but this was like the next step of that, right? Like he, it wasn't really his home homemade video. Mm-hmm. He was evolving. Uh, so I liked. <laughs> yeah, I like I liked the the look of it, but yeah, they could have just got in and out with it, but you know, they they really have a problem with that overall. I feel like there isn't someone that is like edit sensitive yes, they, in, in in their team. <laughs> well, like when you let them do it at home on their own and you like as long as you give us the footage in ample time, you know, it's just do it. We'll we'll figure out what to do with it. And I don't think they're editing their promos and just taking whatever they do. I don't think they're giving Ali that much freedom. I don't think he's there yet. I'm not saying the guy's not great, but yeah, WWE yeah. in WWE's eyes when they have a, a young sure. guy, they don't let uh, very few people, I think, have that sort of privilege. I don't think they would ever say like, oh, just send us something. We'll figure out. They're giving him a very distinct. Well, no, no, so I'm saying they're giving him the script of what to say. Yeah. But I'm saying as far as time limit, like, hey, right. they're not giving him probably that to say, hey, get all these points in within a minute 30. I think it also just plays weird when you have uh, Zelina doing a promo right. beforehand and then handing the mic over to Andrade right. and then him also saying kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's like I, this is necessary. We have Zelina there to do this. Andrade, right. you just be 
smarky and just back it up. It is weird that he has a mouthpiece and still cuts promos. <laughs> it kind of it undercuts her necessity. Yeah. Wasn't the whole purpose what I I understand the character. The whole purpose of Zelina was she was his translator that he couldn't speak no, English. I don't think that was what they this, ever said. Uh I think I think it was more, you know, just business manager okay. and okay. and putting yeah, it in place. Just managerial rather than sh- I think she was she was whatever the role needed. Okay. Kind of fair. Vibe. Fair. I wouldn't mind but, it. Yeah, I, I think they, they the fact that his accent is so thick, I think they're just letting him speak because they feel like it helps people dislike him with more. heat. Yeah. But I would mm-hmm. sooner have them have a repartee. I would sooner have her say a couple things and then check in with him. Like, isn't that right? Oh, see, Selena, you know, <laughs> right. just something like that where he's he's talking a little bit, but mm-hmm. they're interacting together because they're the duo. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice to have them. Rather than dual speeches, then to just have a conversation, but with us as the listener. And obviously, the main event was outstanding. Oh, uh, that God. third Blue Thunder bomb, that incredible Kofi with the leg hook and everything flipped. Yeah, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy scrambling to flip him back over a pen. Like just the whole match was incredible. That's this is the great part of the wild card right. rule. We had two yeah. WWE title matches in two nights for guys that we're not going to see on the same show. Nope. Like I had wanted to see AJ Styles and Kofi, Kofi Kingston fight. And then when they flipped him, it was like, Oh, now it's never going to happen. Right. Oh, it just happened. Right. And this, this goes back to what I was talking about earlier. This scares me now that Kofi may not keep it at money in the bank with them doing the two back to back. And, you know, having Kevin Owens come out to try to help Zayn. And I understand Zayn's a wild card. He'll go back to raw. But then you'll get this next subsequent beatdown next week, potentially. Or Kofi may be out on top, but it scares me that this will be the reason I mean, he's too I drained. I I could play armchair Booker here and tell you, I guarantee next week we get a tag match between Xavier and Kofi versus Zayn and K. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's next week's match. Actually, they got that last night at a dark match, so they're probably just working out for next uh, week's SmackDown. <laughs> Guys, it could be on Raw. They could all be fucking right. wild cards. Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> So yeah, I, I you know it just like I said it wor- it worries me going into money in the bank like they'll say he defended it twice, but so, so you're saying like oh they gave him title defenses so it's, it, so he, he can it, drop it so that it softens the blow and it softens it. the blow of him dropping. I, I understand your logic. I disagree that that's going to happen, but I understand the logic, and I hope you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> God, I hope you're wrong. Jay, I think you're just a little nervous. You were nervous he was going to lose on Raw, so I think I think you're just a True. little nervous all the way around. You damn right I am. Like, give him a pay per view at least. They, <laughs> you know, they are known to not do the best thing, but I I think they see what magic they have with him right now, and I don't I don't I don't think you're going to try and purposely stop that momentum. Okay, not soon. Yeah, I mean, he's got the magic. Seth doesn't. Agree. Right. Very Seth, much agree. Seth's got some decent momentum, but they can make any story now out of Seth. It's like, all right, you you had the moment, we did it, but fuck, do people love Kofi right now? I feel so, like people, thanks, Seth. people really like saying the words "burn it down," and that's kind of as far as people's <laughs> as enjoying it goes. Seth right now. Which yeah. sucks because the guy's still insane. He's still one of my favorite wrestlers. I think he's one of the best wrestlers in the modern era. But we, uh, the character. Now that he's on top, I kind of don't care. Whereas Kofi's on top, and we were celebrating that he's on top. Yes. You know what I mean? And we're still waiting for more celebration. We're like, yeah. And then, well, but what happens when Big E comes back? Yeah, exactly. We're going to get more stuff, right? Yeah. Whereas, Kofi's still throwing out pancakes, so we're happy. Whereas at this point, the only thing that I think could really create more buzz around uh, Seth is if he starts acting a little bit more like anti establishment. If he starts burning shit down, you know what I mean? If now that oh, he's like the champion. Orton? Oh, like Orton, like good guy Orton. Yeah. yeah he burned down the, the wine compound. Yeah. I want him to start like just setting trucks on fire. No, um, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying though? Like give yes. us, give us some edge. Give us some edge. Now that you actually have the title but not edge. against the authority. No, I just, you know, come on, let the man. I rest. mean, a little edge wouldn't hurt. <laughs> that's true. Uh, I, don't, I think that that's been the problem with, with Seth the whole time, right? right? Is that he hasn't really had anything to sink his teeth into. Like he's doing everything they tell him to and the audience is surprisingly into him as much as I feel like they don't really give him a strict way to go he's just like yeah and then I'm gonna kick some ass huh you know it's 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 not really anything that you could really put if what what is Seth Rollins like exactly what would you say is his character I mean uh, up I, up until now I thought it was well defined like he was the guy who took down Triple H they made him the Kingslayer and then he was going up against he was the guy that was going to beat Brock Lesnar when nobody else could and 
And I like that. Again, he was the David. He's the merchandise slayer. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he, he is the he is the David and the Goliath is at all in every, you know, uh, problem that they are throwing at him, you know. Mm-hmm. But now that he's the champion, now you need to burn. You need to make it on your promise. <laughs> also, <laughs> you know it doesn't. I, mean? I don't care about calling him the beast slayer versus AJ Styles. You know what I'm saying? Like AJ is no beast. Yeah, he needs to be like the 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 what's like a soccer de- mom de- demolisher, like what destroys a house, <laughs> the phenomenal slayer or something like that. Wrecking ball. Yes, he's the wrecking ball. I'm gonna destroy the house at AJ Sable. All right, no, no, no. All other all other nicknames are reserved for Ember Moon. That's uh, we all know that to be true. I, I don't know. Uh, I do still love Seth Rollins, but he does need a thing. And I, I think that this AJ match they're giving to us, it's going to be great. It's match the night contender because those guys second that bell ring is going to be incredible. Mm-hmm. But they're clearly booking AJ as a heel going into it at this point. Now they're slowly turning that knob. And I don't think the fans get it yet. <laughs> or they don't want to. They're like, no, no, no. We understand. But I'm, with, I'm with Scott on that one. We think it. he's too cool. Like, right. we're not going to. We're not going to. Yeah. Have you not seen him, how he flicks his hair when he's announced that? Hey. Jay, stop. People love that, okay? Yeah. They love that. It's they more don't... than burning down. <laughs> Three oh syllables. God, what if he burns down his hair? <laughs> oh, no. He's going to burn down his mop top. Uh, uh, well, that'd be a hell of a thing. Hey, guys, you know what I did this week? <laughs> What'd you do? I watched 205 Live. <gasps> so they got a little tick. Me too. That number. What? You did? Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> Doing stuff. Wrestling show. They had a, a pretty damn good main event. I will give them that. No, that was main event. Absolutely. Oh, shit. <laughs> main event had a great 205 match. That's what <laughs> it was. It, the, the main event of 205, uh, watching it later, was, was uh, Superstars. Superstars. Uh, what, well, what happened on 205 Live? <laughs> Akira Tozawa versus Mike Kanellis in a no DQ match. So they uh, took some pretty uh, crazy bumps. So. Oh. As yes. as crazy as that Kofi bump was, right? Like no question, the scary. That bump. was a scary, bad bump. Um, Mike Nels took one as well. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, and uh, is this the same one? The Tazawa did the Hurricane Rana off the ring post. Yes, that one. Yes, into what? the tables. Yeah, Hurricane Rana to Mike from the ring post top rope onto two different tables, and and it just looked. I mean, I could. It looked like they both hurt themselves. Really, I couldn't. That's very true. Tazawa, Tazawa grabbed his shoulder immediately and not in like a, I, I don't know why he would even grab his shoulder there kind of way. So right. That's why. Like he was like, concerned. he wasn't selling his lower back like he, like he always does. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. not where he landed. He landed, right. his legs went through one of the tables and it looked like, yeah, head and oh, shoulder. Um, knees and like toes. Those, well, I was going to say shampoo <laughs> right into the ground. And then Canellis reminded me of, we were talking about WLC and it looked very much like Drew just going and out plunk, and like clunk. Yeah. I mean, that's a, what is that? What would you guess? Was that like 12 feet going? Oh, yeah, because he had to get elevation off of the top rope. I mean, maybe his feet were on the second rope, but he had to obviously clear the top one. Yeah. I can't remember exactly. His All the way to the ground and just whack. God, and damn. I need to see this. It, it, was, it was pretty solid. And, you know, the, the rest of the show was kind of fun, too. But uh, I, I missed seeing Akira Tozawa. There's so many characters on there where I go, oh, that's right. You still work there. Right. There's uh, characters that I love <laughs> that are on that show. Yeah. Well, it's Real quick, speaking of 205 Live, has Cedric Alexander debuted on Raw yet? Have I missed that? No. And, and, no. And but neither, I dare no. say he could be a wild card. And neither did Buddy Murphy. Yeah, I like, back to, yeah, yeah. What, what's the, what, what's going on? The Superstar Shake I, that, They were the only ones that I was kind of excited for the, you know, kind of transition y moving up feeling. Aftershocks. That's I'm, what happened. I'm guessing they weigh uh, both at like 204 right now. So they're <laughs> right. bulking up right now. They're hitting <laughs> Chipotle. They're sitting in the back with EC3, like, man, look, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Well, if they're trying to book up, they're probably <laughs> sitting in the back with Cassius Ono. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. But it's not working. <laughs> who, who got who got his own? I don't know how long he's been sporting this new. It's the same outfit, but it's all black yeah. now. It's kind of trash bag. I like it. <laughs> yeah, mm. it does look like a hefty bag around. I love him. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, terrible. Well, I got to check yeah, out that 205 it, Live then, that match specifically. I, I recommend that match. Absolutely. But yes, Dale mentioned it. Let's do NXT. Uh, uh, Kushida debuts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a little bit worried about this dude uh, because of the aforementioned. I'm worried that the general fans are going to be like, oh, it's Akira Tozawa too. Um, or Hideo Itami. Well, no, even more so, I think 
I think more so Akira because Akira seems so unique though exactly in, in his and, presence and, and that's what I'm getting at I don't think <laughs> um, Kushida has that little uniqueness he seems like a toned down version of Akira Tozawa who I think is like charismatic and yes. great and I love watching that guy so I'm a little worried but the match was great you know fun spots you know come out looking like Marty McFly the obviously the arena really enjoyed it and you know the hype I like is the real. handshake segment between oh, them of, very funny uh Kushida is going for that handshake from Cassius and Cassius is not having it and mocking him at several times right. getting down on one knee well, that, to do they, it. well halfway through the match they had a fun little standoff yes and Cassius goes okay you're really good you're really good and he gets down <laughs> yeah. and he puts his hand out like you're really good you, you never mind I'll shake your hand and then of course that costs him a big boot to the head mm-hmm. um, and then half and then towards the latter end of the match his he gives him the handshake to his lifeless body it's not too yes. dissimilar to what they did with Matt Riddle and the fist bump a few months ago. Right. Um, so, hey, it's a story that they're, they've gotten really good at telling. Let them perfect it because it was really fun. Cassius plays his dinner role very well. Yes. <laughs> this is this is one I was really kind of interested to see because I, I wasn't 100% sure that they would let him keep the Marty like yeah. time splitter uh, gimmick because, I, I mean, it's just so much more embedded in our society. Right. That it like might have a weird. I mean, I mean, one could argue. It's, yeah, one could argue that it's no. What he's doing isn't any more Marty McFly than uh, the demons' venom makeup. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's still vague enough to where it's like, oh, he's preying on a thing that we all enjoy. I mean, for Christ's sakes, when Xavier was in NXT, he was still screaming, "It's morphin' time!" You know. <laughs> Sure. True. Um, uh, it ju- it just comes off kind of cosplay. So I wasn't sure they were going to let him keep it, right. but they did. Yeah. And I mean, it's uh, the audience obviously reacted well to it. So I, I, I don't know. I, I'm always kind of like bittersweet on guys leaving new Japan. Right. When we talked about this, you know, uh, I guess maybe around Wrestle Kingdom time, I, I feel like he had nothing else that he was, you know, he won the damn junior way- title six times or right. something. So he wasn't going anywhere as far as, you know, that was, they had told him that was his place. So right. I see why you would take this jump and journey, but I'm not sure there's a lot of good role models for people coming from Japan and, and getting a great career in WWE Tozawa, ha- like to your point has a lot more character and yeah. what, I mean, he's still in two Oh five. They're not really letting him do. I mean, I, a I, ton. So he had his I moment, I'm just, I'm sure. always anxious when they bring guys over like this. Yeah. But I, mean, I would argue that we still look at two Oh five. Like it's this developmental thing, but like it's a WWE company that is its own show mm-hmm. that, you know, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and so I, I get what you're saying. Cause obviously nobody goes to WWE and goes like, you know what? I don't want to be on raw or SmackDown. Two Smackdown two five live me, right. please. Yeah. But simultaneously, like he's still, if if you're into that brand and that is your thing, then he's a he is a and you're a, a getting to holder. wrestle on right. it and yeah. do your thing and not show up on Raw and get Strowman sure. into in a garbage truck. <laughs> you know. Right. Um, <laughs> by the way, and not well, even I, not even trying I, to fight I'm, out of it. He has nothing to lose. Is my point. I think he sure. knows what his value was in the other company, yeah. so um, he, he has nothing to lose. But I I still think that this is uh with him keeping the gimmick. I, I'm they're definitely leaning into his indie cred. So we'll see if they. If he can actually go to the main roster well, with a Back to the Future gimmick, I I doubt it. I'm right. just worried that uh that Morrow's out of references. I think he used oh my them all. God, up. he really laid them on thick for that match. Good lord. I'm sure we'll get there's there's still plenty more to dip in that well. He'll he'll get all the way to Back to the Future three. <laughs> they'll be like, get the train ready, Doc. <laughs> yeah, he'll be really struggling. Uh, I I do want to mention that electric chair front uh uh face buster. That Ono gave him. Do you, yeah. you remember? Oh yeah, my yeah, goodness! Yeah. He his face just bounces off the mat, <laughs> and within a matter of three seconds, blood is just pouring out of his nose. There was no welcome to NXT. Kid. Yeah, there was no like. Oh, I wonder if he's okay. No, like, he busted his nose mm-hmm. hard, and I was immediately worried. I was like, oh, well, now he's not gonna be able to finish the match. But I, whatever happened must have been quote minor because he seemed to do just fine finishing the match and didn't mm-hmm. miss a beat. But that was another scary moment this week. That and the and the Kofi moment, I was like, ooh. But come from New Japan, at least it's he's used to getting beat up. Right, so right. So yeah. he's tough. Especially because like that's his own fault. Like it's not like <laughs> right. Cash's owner's not in control. It's not like he accidentally dumped him on his head. He pretty much just throws the guy forward and it's up to you to not hit your face on the mat. <laughs> There's no front bumps. You're kind of in as much control as you can be with your hands. And he was just like, no, I'm not taking on my nose. <laughs> I mean it was an ugly bump week. Kudos, I guess. Oh, ugly bump week. Let's change the name of the podcast. 
that sounds like something else. If you say you got an ugly bump week, that they'd be like, "Yeah, is it really wrestling or herpes?" Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. That's, that's the that's what you tune in for. Do you find out each week? <laughs> so we always keep a laptop on you. Hey, you need to make sure WebMD is your friend. Uh, the only, only everything other th- is cancer on there. Cancer. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hundred uh, percent. The only other thing that I really want to bring up from NXT this week um, before we move on is that Velveteen Dream cannot sing. He's fucking tone deaf. Oh, my God. He is completely tone deaf. <laughs> and lacks rhythm. I mean, I would not expect that. I thought that dude was gonna, the second he was like, oh, he's going to sing. A oh, song. really? Why, Jake? <laughs> Why is that? I'm glad Dale said I'll t- it. <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. I'll save you, Jake. I'll be uh, I'll Thanks. be your um, tag. Sonia. I'll be your Sonya Deville to your Mandy Rose. <laughs> oh, go ahead. It's because he's so fucking cool. Yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> that man oozes cool, and then someone found out, like, oh, you can't sing or keep a beat, and they ruined him. Like, this is any any anything that you can go back in the history books of, like, oh, they made this wrestler do this thing that exposed them and ruined them. This definitely hurt the stock of Velveteen Dream I for agree. me watching that segment all the way through a whole fucking song. The entire national why anthem. The, why, the, why the whole song? That's what I didn't understand. Oh, my God. He couldn't. First off, the words are right behind him. All he had to do was turn around and <laughs> no. read. No. Um, he was fine on the words. He did all sure, the words. Sure. He was but, fine on the words. But the rhythm even like. He I, did, he ended it way before because he's oh. like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. And he got to get he, back on this couch. Halfway through it, he was like, I'm just going to fucking Shatner sing talk the rest of this. <laughs> he should have done that from the beginning. It was so bad. It was so bad. And uh, again, to my point, he is so cool. And the reason I thought he was going to be great was because like the dude's got rhythm. He's like a great wrestler. He, you know what I mean? Like any guy who moves like that, I just assume he could probably dance real well and he could probably sing and he probably has. But no, it was like bad karaoke. <laughs> just the worst than bad worst. karaoke. Yeah. It was like going to a school for the deaf I, I, and having them just sing Jingle Bells, having never heard it. A part of me wanted to watch Djakovic just grab the mic from him and be like, well, this is how you do it. And then like he sings flawlessly. He's got like a voice of an angel. Uh, I don't know. I did enjoy watching the women push the couch back. <laughs> Get these poor women some help. They got these women in high heels and short skirts yeah. pushing this couch with a grown man on it around. <laughs> yeah. And I remember being like, come on, throw it on wheels at least. Yeah. Uh, oh, poor Velveteen. That was that was not a good moment. Yeah. If, if you didn't Super watch NXT. Weird. When Percy Watson nails you like that's no good you're it's it's no good when percy watson makes fun of you oh yeah yeah. percy Percy saw that and he was like you know what i'm good here (laughs) i'm good (laughs) Uh, i'll get beat up by a wrestler maybe every two years that's fine i'll just sit at the desk and talk you know i actually i I have a gripe to pick with nxt audience who didn't who, who cheered through the entire thing like it wasn't yeah. bad. Horseshit. Yeah, I was Horseshit. wrong. I was very angry at the NXT audience for staying with Velveteen during this bit that did not go over yeah, well. Yeah, you can't sing. You're, no. you're toned up. Yeah. Something like. Yeah, please you got- stop singing. Clap, 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 mm-hmm. clap, clap. Like uh, they were with him for the entire thing. And I was thoroughly upset with them. Maybe because they were singing so loud they drowned him out. I don't know what it <laughs> sounds like in the arena, but they're just playing bullhorns the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, I never thought I would want uh, air horns to come back to a wrestling audience before until hearing Velveteen Dream sing oh the Velveteen National Anthem. I hope for his sake this moment is soon forgotten by everyone else. Here's the question, though. Will you all forget it? No, I'll never no, forget that's it. That's what I'm saying. This is a shit I hang on to forever. You've heard me on the show. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is very true. Um. Anyways, did you guys uh, cash in your free... Impact Wrestling Plus thing? No, Impact I did not. Plus? Yes, I did. I did not. I, I've been working. I'm working at a bar at a, as a bouncer as a, at a bar, so I can't. Are you lying right now? Yeah. Like, there's a, a lot of reaching. Like, no, I do. I, I work as a bouncer as a at, at a nightclub called The Reserve. And, and, he's, and he's got multiple Facebook a, accounts. A, <laughs> and I was I was grocery shopping at the club, and I was <laughs> saving old ladies from <laughs> drowning and crocodiles. Buying extra lemons. Her name okay. was Janice. Janice was her name. She told me Janice. She was from Michigan. <laughs> Her husband died in 1987, <laughs> uh, which is way too many details. Uh, I put a Patreon video out of my firing it up. I watched it. And I it. Uh, fuck, kudos to Impact. It is a great service. Um, I was thoroughly surprised to see just how clean and organized it was. There is weekly shows. I watched this past week's Impact. Now, I don't know. Fridays is when Impact Wrestling airs. Oh, and, and when do, do you we're know? Gonna, we're going to find out. This weekend, this week. we'll find out. 
Um, so, so let's catch everybody up a little bit since sure. we've not talked about Impact a whole lot lately. Right. So they launched, uh, we, we announced this last week because it happened right before we did the show. Right. Impact Plus. Uh, uh, we're boring there, Jay here. He's just, <laughs> I'm sorry. He's working at a club <laughs> and there's no pillows. And can't get sleep. There's just hammocks, but they're made of <laughs> ribbons. I do like that he tried to cover his mouth with a yawn, but the yawn was so loud like, that I heard it through his mic. mouth. Yeah, in the microphone. <laughs> like he didn't even turn his head. <laughs> Yeah, I tried and it's no, it's no it disrespect work. to Impact. I just got to. Okay, so what do I do? Go to Impact Plus and get my 30 day free trial. Don't do it. Don't bother. We <laughs> You're not, not going to watch on. it. Anyways. So you'll get you'll get hit on your credit card, man. Because well, you'll I, forget. Yep. No, I said, uh, I said reminders. Anything I buy that has anything I do that has a free trial, I set a reminder to remind me to cancel two days before. That explains all those Pornhub emails on your <laughs> inbox. So it's a Pornhub Impact- email. It was like, who's going to be the tag team champions <laughs> of the wrong tag team? OK, so Impact <laughs> launched. I hope that's on Smackdown and not raw. <laughs> oh, it's raw. <laughs> uh, so Impact launched a new streaming service. Oh, still doing the story. So global. <laughs> it's not your baby story. Uh, global Wrestling <laughs> Network is now kaput. Okay. I haven't looked at the app that was on my Xbox one to see what happens when I try and bring it up. Oh. But the website redirects you to Impact. Gotcha. Plus, um, so it is essentially a rebranding. Yes. More than a new service because they had so much of that content already available See, on there. They I, had old episodes of uh, like, well, they had old pay-per-views, right. but it was lacking a lot of stuff still. And and it wasn't available on every service because I sure as hell couldn't find it on my Roku. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Remember, we did this not last time when TK was here, but like months and months ago, we had talked about Global this during Wrestling the, Network. Yeah. And I oh, couldn't okay. find it anywhere uh, on any service whatsoever. But now it's uh, it's on less services than what Global Wrestling Network was. But Interesting. More will be coming. Sure. It's on all the major ones. Right. So sure. on any of the gaming systems, it's not. But as you said, yeah, it's on my the interface too. is very, very solid. Very clean. I like that everything is uh, is uniform. Like incredibly uniform. Everything is just the same text over an image. Yes. So you don't have to scroll through. Because I will say this: I hate Impact's branding. Everything is like super extreme and it's metal and glass shards and it's like a bit much for me design wise. So I enjoy not having to look at all these godforsaken logos Um, because even like we've talked about this at one of our uh, recent uh, Patreon bonus things where we scroll through the WWE Network. Yes. And all the shows are kind of the same, but a little bit different. And it's kind of hard to decipher what's what. And you're just dealing with a graphic. Yes. So you're like, oh, I wanted to see the Kevin Owens thing. Is that 24? Is that 365? exactly. Which thing? But on the Impact app, everything is just a a, a thumbnail with white letters over it. And it Mm -hmm. just tells you exactly what you're getting. Um, And I was also pleasantly surprised to see all of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood it's a shame this didn't exist <laughs> back when uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood's Johnny LaCosta was a part of our program because it would have been nice to actually talk about that with him. But now you can go, uh, if you haven't seen it, get the Impact Plus app and go and you can watch all of old, uh, like everything is on. There's so many different really? indie There's a lot companies. Of stuff. Yeah, there's indie companies. So I, I brought up uh, the app here on World phone. Series Wrestling, which I'm a fan of, is on there, which I like. Yeah, there's uh, a Capital Wrestling, Smash Wrestling. Yeah. Um and they yeah like you say they they categorize it they put them all in their own playlists right. and you can see yep. them there so there's a ton here which is great and then on top of that they've done a lot of uh DVD compilations on there so right. impact for a while they were they were really strong releasing like best of like things. home videos yeah. yeah and those are all, a yeah. lot of these are on here it's great the uh it's a shame impact that- pay per views are on here the asylum years are on here uh. Basically, all of the, the, the broken hardy stuff. Right. It's all here. Right. And honestly, the only thing on this entire app that's not worth watching is really the new Impact stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was delighted to actually uh, watch a, a new episode I, in full. I, I, will, I will admit, I, it brought me pleasure to very easily turn on a thing with my remote in my TV in my living room and watch a high def version of... Um, uh, of Impact Wrestling, even if the f- events that occurred within it without, were very questionable. Without ads. Without any ads whatsoever. Ex- with the exception of the app, right. uh, which is yes. WWE does the same. Yeah, they're, they're playing incessantly ads for the app you're currently using. I don't quite understand that, but I guess it's But because, WWE Network does the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, be, but, yeah. be happy that you own the network. Sure. I am. Sure. Please bring me back to the show. But I will say this. Impact Plus has one up on WWE Network right now. Because of the weekly shows. Because of the weekly shows, yes, which absolutely. is something that people have always wanted on WWE Network, but obviously TV a lot of... deals are not going to allow that right. to happen. Right. <clears throat> so it was cool to see a, a new episode 
and it, it felt like, all right, I've missed a lot. So right. s- starting from this point, sure. here we go. And uh, we're getting caught up on the pay-per-view that happened, Rebellion. Right. And um, seeing Michael Elgin's big uh, role in the company now. Sure. And that's He's, the guy who I've seen before, and I've been like, oh, I'm kind of underwhelmed. I, I was still underwhelmed, but... But I was more whelmed now because yeah. it's a fresh face. Um, so what's going on with the with the title after the injury and... Jay, uh, Jay's raising his hand during a podcast. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm very happy for Michael Elgin. It's a guy that's worked with him, followed his career, and watched all the hardships he's gone through, ups and downs, for him to land at Impact, and for them to be putting, like, basically putting stuff on his back and let him run. Oh, yeah, he he's seems great to be one of the pillars, at least in the episode that I watched. Like, that mm-hmm. was... It's him versus uh, versus Johnny Nitro Impacts in Pentagon. Pent- oh, and Pentagon, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, um, for a number one contendership right. for the Ad- title. Admittedly, I was a little underwhelmed by him character wise. He just seemed like oh, big tough guy who's a good wrestler, which is fine, I guess. And Canadian, oh, so you and, gotta you gotta you know right. You can give him that little. Uh, you have to say his name with an F at the end of it. He's matter of fact, which I'm I'm sure. always for a character of that sure. uh, 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 type. Um, and he was dishing it out pretty good. Like right. he had his digs in yeah. about well, Brian Cage, who couldn't keep it together. Sure. Talking about Canadian fans, how they're supposed to back up fellow Canadians. Right. And then when impact comes out, Johnny, uh, he, and he's trying to dish it out and he's being mumble mouth, you know, Elgin I, dished it back fairly well. Can I, I do want to say though, and this is something that uh, I know I'm probably alone uh, on this, maybe in this company, because uh, I know you're a fan of old school like you don't mind shit that bothers me i the second that impact started this week that i watched i immediately was like what fucking year is it because literally like the digs are homophobia and like blatant sexism like shit that i remember like dumb tough macho guys saying to each other in the fucking 1980s like oh your balls are in your wife's purse and oh you two look like you were gonna kiss each other like it's funny because it makes it seem like you're gay and like it, it, it seemed so irritating to me i can't stand conan i want him to go away and retire forever uh i respect what he did back in the day i respect how many hats he wore simultaneously um in wcw and all that nonsense but the dude is so out of touch and i know that he's on their creative staff right now and uh, he, I don't know. It's just, it's so like old school machismo wrestling that reminds me of shitty independent companies that I don't enjoy watching because they're so out of touch. Sure. But we've also complained on this show about everyone sounding like a video game program of mm-hmm. but that, money in the bank. I'm going to challenge and I will win this thing. Like, yeah, but all right, somebody say something. But you know, somebody the, else. The, there's middle ground there. Like you can be fun and interesting. I mean, the, what the, every time the Usos do something on somebody, it's fucking great and hilarious. Like, they, right. But U- they're not going Usi back hot, to, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I didn't see that. Um, but but, you know I'm saying, but let there be these other characters. If Conan is going to say homophobic stuff, like then that's who he is. And you can boo him for that. You can find him. <laughs> and I guess that's the problem is that they're not like I can boo that to him. But the company is not telling me to. The company is saying, hey, these are the cool guys. And aren't they funny? Like it's about the presentation of uh, of this sort of like overtly machismo characters that I just. Uh, but they're I'm, also oh. are overtly machismo characters look at the size of fucking michael elgin yeah look but at the abs of J- johnny mundo like do we need like they don't read a lot remarks? of books <laughs> like to say that his balls is in his wife's purse like that's pretty funny i thought that it's was just, something to say because it's, it's his like, one joke probably sure yeah, i don't but, know I, I get what you're saying but i again that it, it was it sucked for me that that's how the episode started because I was immediately reminded of why I don't like Impact generally. And it's that sort of dated presentation. And then, of course, matches happened. And I was like, this is great wrestling. And there's still a lot of fun stuff on that show. But it was unfortunate for me personally, my experience, that the episode started with something that made me fucking roll my eyes. But and WWE you, has had the stuff. Playing. I mean, oh, we're talking about the embarrassment stuff. Where, I of mean, course. We had big cast calling Daniel Bryan short. Like, there's always just, like, lame things being presented. So I think uh, no, to just yeah. own no it on a company when they are giving more creative freedom for these people to talk and sure. go make your own waves, that's at least something compared to, well, we wrote everything out for you yeah. and this was approved by everybody. And, and again, I think there's a, there's a middle ground there that we can probably find. Yes. I'm not saying that everything WWE puts out is fucking gold by any means. Well, then that's but, the rest yeah. of the show was the middle ground. Was it not? Um, for the most part. I mean, it wasn't a lot of like, like actual talking segments after that opening, which was good. Give us some stuff. Although man, Josh Matthews, he seems like he is done. That dude does not seem to be having a good time. It's going to be John Quasto in a couple of years. <laughs> you mean Quasto? John Quasto? Do you disagree, though? Do you notice that? 
No, because I think he's he's interested enough by um I'm blanking on his name right now. Um uh but is it a wrestler? Or is it a dude? Yeah, the co commentator. The, oh, uh, the other guy who I can't stand who's dated and generic and everything <laughs> is a bad old uncle joke. Creepy uncle, former wrestler, creepy uncle guy. He's sure. so weird. I can't stand that dude either. I'm, I'm blanking on his name at the moment, but um no, Don, I think Ron, he keeps Don him, something, Dan something. No. Uh <laughs> thank you. <laughs> he's keeping him entertained and engaged because I think there's been times when he hasn't had that. That's fair. And I think he he definitely wears it on his shoulder or right. on his sleeve when there are people that he doesn't like. Right. Like like on friggin' code red on that awful special that was happened on Sunday. Oh, okay. I didn't see that. Oh, I did. Let me guess, you liked it. Oh boy. <laughs> I had to stop. I couldn't make it. I couldn't finish it. Mm-hmm. It was pre- it was co-presented by um Glory of Wrestling. No, wait. House of Glory. Hog. Hog is the name of this wrestling company. Not a hog. Yeah. It's um, company, which is a yeah. New York company. And I, I gotta just say, it was like they shot it on uh 2004 Samsung Galaxy. The the second you started, it's it is good to know that they're not editing stuff. From the live stream to the like downloadable feed on because uh-huh. it's not edited. Because the second you hit play, you're met with 13 seconds of the logo mm-hmm. and the audience with no nothing happening. Eventually, commentary starts and you hear Josh Matthews and he's like, "Hey, welcome to our first special thing." Blah, blah, blah. And then I at that point I'm like, "Oh, this is kind of a low broadcast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the volume up." And then a ring announcer comes in and it's so goddamn loud that it made my surround sound system my amp like. The trigger, the auto feature that prevents it from blowing speakers, it made the shit just shut off. Damn. <laughs> it was so misleveled. It was just a production nightmare. You sound like a rich bougie ass. The right ring, now. first off, the ring. You I made don't know. my surround sound just turn off. Uh, the ring was <laughs> bizarre, <laughs> and the ropes were so loose that people couldn't uh, like achieve springboard moves. The bottom rope was like falling off. It was literally hitting the mat. It was just it, the whole thing felt very cheap. And 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 if. Josh Matthews didn't seem out of it during the weekly broadcast. Oh my God. They had a camera on him and his tiny little desk with the audience. He looked like he was done. They sat down. <laughs> they sat down the, like the local commentator for, uh, for hog wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, this like, y- you think I have a thick New York accent. Good God. And this guy hog Quasto, you, you could, f- <laughs> they sat down on Quasto and, you could feel like tension between the two of them. It almost seemed like Josh was bothered that he had to sit with a match with this guy. And then he had to explain to him who all the stars were from hog wrestling. Sure. It was just not a great first special, but I will say this, the production quality was like, it, it didn't match what was on the impact show. The impact show looked fine. Impact show looked pretty damn good. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the set, which I know has been around for a while now with the lights that hang over the, like the mm-hmm. light bar, the present, the presentation of impact has gotten way better. They still need to work on some minor production shit like Josh's mic literally just peaking and being distorted for half of matches sometimes. But production quality was was pleasing. I will say this. A highlight of Impact Wrestling this week was Ethan Page with RVD. Yes. RVD that was, was a pretty good segment. It was that was middle segment. ground. Yes. It was middle ground. Although I, I, the entire time I thought like, oh, they lost a guy named Ethan. So they replaced him with a guy named Ethan because it seems to me like he's EC3. He's reborn. been Ethan Page long before really? Ethan Carter the third. So um, well, what uh? Wait, so RVD is is on there? Yeah, yeah cause he had showed back up <sighs> for another special event. Um, I love that Jay's mad that because oh, wrestlers like, show up. Well, no, it's just that paid. every time when I when I, I I don't watch Impact as much, and I I will admit that I'll catch up very seldomly. But I hear you guys talk about so many like older older wrestlers, where it's just like Impact is like. We need people. Is there one Goldberg dude? is coming yeah. back to WWE. Yeah, yeah and I, but I get that's a one-time thing. And RVD can still move. Uh, and before that, it was a one-time thing. Before that, it was a one-time thing. Fair. This shit happens Fair. forever in Fair. wrestling. Also, also I, want, I want an RVD and Impact. I want a huge name that's going to draw eyes to the company. And don't you want your boy who you were proud of to, like, face RVD and get that recognition? Yeah, but... Yeah. Yeah. And I think I always feel like it's it's weird to be angry that, uh, that like... A wrestler who can still go, by the way. He doesn't yeah. look great, but he can still yeah, move. Dude, yeah. I was just going to say, because I saw him at uh, LA Comic Con, and I was like, oh, it looked like it just hurt for you to walk. Oh, no, no I, don't, I don't think that. I think more like in his face, he looks. Oh, that, oh yeah, all the weed. He still age. moves fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got weed face. I don't know what that means. Um, 
But I thought they had a they, they had a fun segment. Fun. RVD was messing around with them, and uh, Ethan the, Page is getting to establish his character. Yes, doing the thing about the chairs. Oh, I'm going to show you a way to use chairs. Yeah, and that you've never it. seen before. He brings out two chairs, and like, I know you're excited. And then... Yeah. sets them down to sit in yes. and the crowd reacted. It was like, that was pretty and, good. Like you showed up RVD. It was, then a, it was got, also off the cuff played when it seems like, yes, when RVD didn't quote, there was no script. Like you said, but in this instance, they were just funny where he's like, well, fine, if you're not going to sit on it and then he puts his foot on it, RVD pulls it out from him, mm-hmm. spins it around sits on it, like, or leans on it. Like he's, you know, uh, like a new teacher in an urban school, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> teaching the a kids hip, a hip college professor yeah hip college professor. like i'm gonna sit here and relate to you and there was some funny little shots where he's like listen i've never looked up to you and rvd's like well you're literally doing it right now and he yeah, like, like gestures the above height. you yeah just it was very good um uh, i will give them that this was entertaining especially as a guy who i don't i don't I'm not familiar with ethan page a ton um i know him as a part of a tag team there and whatnot but and um, then setting up a match for next yes. week where it's like, oh, cool. You got me excited for something yes. the following week right. to and, watch. And now, these I ha- two wrestling. now I can I have a story now that's that I'm involved in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, it'll it'll hopefully make me forget anything that's happening with Sue Young and these undead brides people, because good Oof. God, that segment and that whole match and that I'm done. I'm done with that. Like that ship has sailed. You need to rebrand all of these people. Get rid of undead. Anything's it is so bad. Uh. They murdered Allie, so they should all be under arrest. <laughs> and and Rosemary, who I used to really like, like sat in the middle of the ring and got pummeled by like eight women and no selled the entire thing. No selled, you know that's no, the post. That's, sold no. That's the past sold tense. Node? The past tense of I think it sell is sold. Solded. <laughs> sold it. Sold it. She soldered. She sold it. She no soldered the entire thing. Uh, but it was just terrible. This whole segment was terrible. Her like releasing the oh oh the undead's bride uh, whatever her name is made of honor she had one and then Kira Hogan I also Stole don't think it. is TV ready like no, there's just a lot all. of stuff in that in the knockouts division that's just lacking right now and they they were they were riding high for a while and they they got to build that back up yeah that that whole thing is done uh, <laughs> end it please rebrand not Rosemary though don't well Rose but I mean, she was the OG though so like she's but I still think that she's uh she's maybe getting too comfortable I don't know. She's reminding me of Natalia, where it's like she's there, she's going through the motions, but she doesn't seem to really have that oomph. That there was a there was a natural progression where she went from bad guy to face, and mm. the the crowd loved it. But now her remaining a face with no one to save or do, and just like, no, you're a dark and evil character. Let's right. get back to the roots of this. Right, like, we need to we need to tap into that. Like you just coming out with face paint doesn't is not enough. Doesn't yeah. yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't make sense. But either way, like. As much as Jake uh, and I partially shit on the show this week, there's a ton of stuff for 30 days yeah. that you could watch. You could watch, you can search matches on here and find that stuff. Going and seeing Ethan Carter III, right. Broken Matt Hardy, Rockstar Spud, yeah. all this stuff that you've heard about and maybe haven't seen. You I'm looking, for 30 I'm looking days, forward like, to doing like a pay-per-view binge where I just like, mm-hmm. oh, let's let's go to a year that that impact was really killing it and just watch like the pay-per-views for that year. Mm-hmm. I can help you out with that because it's super it's super organized where you can just hop from one to the other. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And there's so much content. Seven bucks a month. Like even after the thing, I could definitely see myself just keeping keeping it for that purpose. Uh, so, so have they said if it's um going to have the new pay-per-views on there or what's the deal for that? Yes, so it, it it appears that it's it's like the UFC uh, app where you have all this content, but then the new pay per views that come in, that's where you can purchase them. And oh, okay. And I'm curious to how long it's going to take before they're just in the archive, though, because there right. are pay per views currently in the archive, right? Which makes me wonder, like, what's the statute of limitations? Is it a month? Is yeah. it two months? Probably. You would, you would hope they would push it a month, otherwise nobody would buy it. Right. They just watch it. A week later, it seems like they got back to making DVDs regularly. I looked at their their website for right. the shop, and so probably around the same time that they're going to start printing DVDs for right. that pay per view. That's they go like, yeah, all right, free. it's in the archives. So good on them for making yeah. an updated app that people can understand. It makes sense with branding, right? And it works. Yeah. So good, 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 good. Do you guys want to take some calls from the Compadres hotline? Oh. Because we haven't done, we didn't do any last week, so I think we should take some this All week. Right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Hi guys, Owen from Leeds here. To be honest, I've just finished this week's SmackDown, and um, I don't know what way can you uh, fix terrible ratings just by having 
Vince on Raw for about half an hour and brand split. What brand split? Just kind of seems a bit of a waste of time. So, as I'm in a mood when it comes to wrestling this week, I just thought I'd ask, as I believe we're past the point of spoilers, have you all seen Endgame and what were your thoughts? Cheers, guys. Thanks for everything, as always. Cheers, Owen, but cheer in the most literal sense. I hope that he's comes so, back to you. He's so sad. He's so sad. It's, it's, he, it's, everything's going to work out okay. He sounded like, he sound like he wanted to cry. He had to pull himself back. was like, man, this is, fuck. You'll see Endgame. <laughs> Look, it's five years later, and we're all going to be okay. So this is uh, Avengers Endgame uh, thoughts, spoiler free, in case there's some people that still haven't managed to see it. I thought it was great. I, I'm kind of soft on the Avengers movies overall. I fucking loved it. It's amazing. Yeah, I loved it. It was one of my favorite movie going experiences of all time. I cried for three hours straight. <laughs> we finally paid off and finally heard Avengers Assemble in the best way possible. It was all right. That was, that was not a spoiler free. <laughs> Well, look, I, I didn't say I just said we heard Avengers Assemble, which everything everybody knew that was coming. Well, we're the only ones that heard it. Everyone else uh, uh, within the movie didn't. No, <laughs> there's a couple of those moments. Yeah, he didn't yell loud enough. But yeah, go see it, Owen. Maybe we'll cheer you up. Hey, compadres, this is Sherry from Connecticut. So your Firefly Funhouse names I come I came up with are Sassy Scott Narver, Petty Jake Lloyd. Villainous Jay Washington and the OG Dale Rutledge. Feels like it fits your personalities. Thanks, guys. Bye. Sherry gave us names. Sherry, yeah, she gave us names, but I, I have a gripe. I mean, you and I have the like the appropriate. You have style. a gripe. Uh, names. I'm Petty. I'm Petty Jake. <laughs> that that but, is you. But they just like they're just like regular nicknames for Jay and Dale. Villainous. Yeah, he calls himself that. Uh, well, the, then the resident supervillain. Then it's ombre. Oh, you live in you his house You don't live now? here. You don't live here. <laughs> I'm the resident. He gets super- mail here, though. <laughs> I'm the resident <laughs> supervillain to wherever it's, I. He gets so many phone bills. <laughs> <laughs> like seven different Instagram phones. Photos? Yes. Don't you see the shirt? <laughs> Certified supervillain. Thank you to Zone Ten Customs. But <laughs> what? That's a description for Dale. He's an original gangster. He is the OG. <laughs> Whenever I think of Dale, I think <laughs> original gangster. I just want to see Dale do some some banging and slang and talking about some what's up, bitches. Like, whoa, shit. All right. No, just me. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I mean, it'd have to be an extra special Patreon episode for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sherry, for the names. Hey guys, this is Paul from Long Island. Um, I've noticed that Jake does not say the word "terrible," but he does add extra emphasis on the R's in "terrible." Also, I've noticed that he says the word "great," and he really emphasizes that word, kind of like Tony the Tiger. And you'll probably never to unhear this one. But he does don't use this, and it's fucked up. I love you, Jake. That was my cousin Paul telling me not to use his phone call, talking about all the different things that I say. I appreciate him defending me. So you go, you don't scream. Saying that I don't say terrible, I do say terrible. Mm, sometimes you say terrible. I thought you said terrible. Also, I wish I said great more like Tony the Tiger. Great. All right, let's see if we got another one. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, Stu Hart from Calgary, and my question is, uh, we saw these uh, creepy vignettes from the Bray Wyatt, and then it ended up being not creepy. It wasn't what we expected, and I was wondering what your guys' favorite non-expected debut or vignette was. Mine was uh, 2012, when you thought Bruce Clay was going to be a monster, and then he was like that just going monster guy. That was just one of your favorite. Thank you. Stu, thanks for calling. Uh, hopefully everything's clean down the dungeon. Uh, we have been thinking about this a little bit. Like what was, uh, Brodus Clay is a good example of like, oh, it's going to be one thing. Tensai. Oh, oh, that was I so thought, bad. I thought ten, I love Tensai. I thought Tensai was great. Made, made sense. There's a guy that went to Japan, wrestled for years, like inhabited this warrior spirit and came back like no i'm not a joke i'm not any of these things i was before i am coming back as a fucking badass and i will wreck you and then they didn't run with it <laughs> eventually i feel like they gave up they gave up faith on it before right. they really let it breathe i don't i don't know it was also around the time that brock lesnar came back so i think everything was mm-hmm. overshadowed also by those fucking 
fans. They were screaming Albert at him every match. That was also the same people that would scream like whatever they remembered. Like right. they would chant Husky Harris at Bray Wyatt. Right. I feel like at that time because Bray was probably new then. And Tensei had a great match with Cena. Right. And it was quickly forgotten. Yeah. I wanted more out of Mordecai with the vi- with the vignettes and the build up to him. I just wanted more out of it. I mean, I got the, you know, I'm going to be the light, but I'm still evil at the same time. You know, the whole way Kevin Thorne did it. And I was like, all right. But then when the debut came, I just was like, this is looks like just Jeff Jarrett on steroids. This just don't look right. <laughs> well, I'm sure he was on steroids. At some point. Yeah, that just looked like Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Do you got one, Dale? I, I kind of feel like the, the boogeyman was kind of built up to be something. They turned him into a joke kind of quickly, or at least like not not something scary per se, just like who's going to eat worms this week kind of vibe kind of quickly. Right. I feel like he could have he been a really scary character for a while, but they didn't. They just kind of went with the gag. Literally. As a black man, that vibrating gyrating was terrifying. <laughs> As a white man, it was too. <laughs> Because you would think you're like, oh, he's about you, Jake. How about as a Puerto Rican man? How was it? <laughs> I'm so sleepy. Stop working on your catchphrases on this show. Well, thanks to our callers. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to everybody who called the hotline. We, we got a lot of. Send Jason pillows. We got a lot of phone calls this week that were just like, what's yeah. with this wild card bullshit? And so uh, we, they sound very sad. Yeah, a lot of people sad. sound very confused. Like what I talked about with the casual fan, like yeah, people just sound confused and sad. This but also hurt. they 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 use it as a therapy session. They used yeah. all fifty minutes right. from calling. So, so please, a little shorter. Yeah, so Mickey, so we can work you in. Mickey, I think Tim did the same. O- Owen, so we apologize for not. Owen playing. from Leeds was the one that was just oh, hurt. He was just we're, we're the windbags around yeah. here. If we didn't, uh, if we didn't use your call, we apologize. Please keep calling. But uh, sometimes we get five of the exact same sad phone call. And, and again, we and bad. we know you all won't know who what else is that everybody else is saying. But pretty much, be you can be certain if it's a main thing that happened, we either a covered it or everybody's gonna ask it already. How do people call the hotline, Jay? 747-666-5606. 747-666-5606. And if you are out of state, the, the United States, you can go ahead and make a recording on your phone, a clear recording, and email it to info at dragonwagonradio.com. I dare say, call the hotline. Let us know. Did you use the Impact Plus app? Were you using the trial? Did you check it out? Yeah, let us know Or your did you not? Yay or nay, let us know. So that wraps us up for this week. Since no one else, uh, I, I thought you it. were close. I thought you were close. That's why I, I didn't say anything. Or I got it. I just didn't think it was humorous. Uh, so we'd like to thank our Patreon Palskis. You guys are awesome. Aaron Christian, Abshir Jama, AJ zero three one four, Alex Pierce, Andrea Beeler, Brian Collins, Brittany M Kitchens, Charles Schofield, Christine, Edmund Carley, Edwin A Santos, Gavin Provost, Gilbert Short, Johan Pena, JP Masked Llama. Matt Salgado, Matthew Beasley, Michael Beltran, Nick Glancy, One and Only Nuggets, Paisley Darts, Pete Garit, Portia Anderson, Rory Wirtz, The Scoop Staley, Tim Bemis, Tina Keys, Tom Hader, Wayne Lynch, and Zach Ayafuso. We got great content on there. Uh, one thing we'd like to point out, there's a Patreon app as well. So maybe if the bonus episodes or any of the videos, you're like, oh, I don't want to go and sit down on the computer and do it. You can download the app. You can listen and watch easily from the app. The content is still there. Works on all devices. So check out the Patreon app if that will help you out. Yeah. And also, we started doing a weekly pre-show uh, that is super fun. It's as we are all just settling into the studio um, before we record the actual episode every week. And uh, we talk about literally anything and everything. And it's ridiculous and a ton of fun. We're doing them every week now. You can only hear those at the Patreon at the uh, bonus audio tier, in addition to all the awesome bonus actual episodes that are available to you as well. True, true. I think there's about a month of them now. Nice. Of the uh, the pre-show stuff. Yeah, so, there you go. Uh, you can check me out on social media at Scott Never and check out YouTube.com slash On Your Mark Show. My God, seeing uh, Marky Extreme in the crowd for Sudden Honor Wrestling when Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho showed up. You want to check out that episode. Plus, there's repercussions with Killer Cross Ooh. and with Skeeter. What's going to happen? Tune into that show, Being the Extreme, every Monday morning, and it's only getting better and better with more surprises coming your way. Ooh, I'm getting into it. That's interesting. I might check that out. No, you won't. I, I said I might. 
I guarantee you. But what I'm was right. the last episode of On Your Mark You Watched? I'm sorry. What was the first episode of On Your Mark You Watched? <laughs> uh, what was it? It was. I think it was the Matt Hardy one. Which one? Because I know there was like a brown. I saw something. It started with Marky Extreme in a backyard, then it went to like a backstage. <laughs> He's describing every episode. No, because then it went to like a I backstage. Was in a bar, and there was no pillows. <laughs> it went to a backstage. <laughs> I got five Facebook accounts. No, but it went to a backstage and I was watching. I was like, this is crazy. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try to watch more, but I haven't. I'm sorry. But you can find me, Twitter and Instagram, at Mr. J Washington, M R J A Y Washington. You should know how to spell it. Uh, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash J A Y Washington 80. The Doom Patrol reviews are on there, myself and Winston A. Mar. So we got three more episodes, and those drop every single Friday. And also, make sure you check out the Mad Titan podcast. Everywhere you get your podcast, listen on. I get you caught, caught up on everything that's happening in the Marvel and DC live-action cinematic universes. It is barbershop talk for nerds. Keep shit real cool, calm, and just chill. So go ahead, come join in the convo on that. Find me on Twitter, at Liquid Jake, on Instagram, at Jake Lloyd. And if you haven't checked out um, our brand new podcast, Me, You, and 30 Other Men, please do so. I sit down with my much better half, and uh, we dive into the entire history of the Royal Rumble matches in real time. Uh, we sit down and, and pick a random Royal Rumble at, uh, out of our Jaw Royal Rumbles and experience it live in real time with you if you're into that sort of thing. It's a ton of fun as Alexandra gets sort of a crash course in WWE history. Check that out at meun30.com um, or you know wherever podcasts are. You can always just search Dragon Wagon Radio and you'll get all the Dragon Wagon podcasts in any podcast app. Which one did you just get most recently? Uh, the very first one we watched was 2007. And uh, mm. the uh, uh, the spoilers, uh, this <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> Thanos wins. this Sunday, uh, it'll be, well, here's the thing is we pick it out of uh, the jar every week. So we don't know when we sit oh, down. So you're not going in but, order. You're just picking. No, no, no. Yeah. We pick it out of the jar every week. So we don't know, but we still name the episode, whatever year it is we watched. Sure. So it's not really a surprise to the listeners as much as it is to us. So episode two of this Sunday, we are, we jump back 10 years to watch 1997. Mm. Yeah. Which is a great one. Oh, uh, at you least just did has, the Tony the Tiger. At least it has a great ending. You did see my cousin. He knows. He knows. He knows all. Um, yeah. So it's a ton of fun. Is that Stone Cold? Sorry. I know we're trying to wrap the show, but is that 97? Is that Stone Cold? Uh, yes. It's Stone Cold sitting on the ropes. Looking at his watch, waiting. Uh, Non-existent <laughs> watch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. That's a good one. So I'm The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can find me later trying to get Jonas Brother tickets because apparently <laughs> it's a must-have birthday present and they are hard as hell to find. <laughs> I don't know. The world done gone crazy and it's all about Jonas Brother tickets. So. <laughs> find me on the internet. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> It's okay, old man. He'll explain it to you <laughs> post show when we start that whole thing. <laughs> Sometimes there's a demand for more <laughs> than the allotment of tickets allow. Well, thanks for listening to everybody. We'll be back next week with more compadres. And hey, we might have a wild card. Maybe Sam Roberts and <gasps> all sorts of other uh, busted open people from Sirius will be here instead. Or maybe Johnny uh, Clesto. Or whatever his name is, John Clesto. I love that it's different every time. It's John my favorite. Clesto, he he might you never know. He might appear on two hundred five live, or it'll just be us. Bye, guys. That's entertainment. It's Dragon Wagon.